one twelve in the afternoon, and I think we have to start our event formally. So again, good afternoon. So our event is entitled Automation of Business Permit Application Process. This is in partnership with ARTA and DILG. This is intended for the LGUs who are not yet automated in terms of their business permit application. And in joint force with the DICT, DILG, and ARTA, so we will be discussing rules and different guidelines for an LGU to become automated for your business permit application. So before we proceed, uh, we would like to remind everyone to please have their attendance. So again, the attendance link will be sent to your chat box. So kindly view it. Oh. And also, uh, we will be having an attendance through QR code. So as you can see po on your screen, you can um, scan it and you will be redirected to our form and you may fill up for your attendance. So I think everything is clear. So again, may I confirm to our participants if I am loud and clear. Can you please type number one if my uh, words are clear on your end? Okay, thank you very much for the confirmation to our participants. So as we proceed formally to our event, let us all bow our heads and feel the presence of the Lord. And this is to be followed by the Philippine National Anthem. Dear Almighty Father, we express our sincere gratitude for the gift of another day. We ask forgiveness for our sins, for which we lay our regrets and sorrows. Thank you for your overflowing and unending patience, kindness, and love that you shower us every day of our lives. Today, as we gather for this special event, we humbly seek your divine providence to help us share your grace to others. Help us engage in meaningful discussions by giving us wisdom, understanding, and guidance. Help us learn and grow and love one another so that we can become better children of yours. Amen. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. That ends our national anthem and prayer. So again, we would like to remind everyone to please do not forget to fill up their attendance. So again, you may fill up to our chat box. So the link is being sent there and also you may scan through your screen. And also to our Facebook Live viewers, the link for attendance has been posted. So you may also fill up your attendance while you're watching live via Facebook. Okay. So let me remind everyone on the netiquette while we are ongoing on the discussion of our topics. 
So the first netiquette is mute your uh, mic at all times unless you are requested to unmute to have some inputs regarding the discussion. And also to save the bandwidth, you may turn off your camera unless you are requested to have a photo opportunity. Also, you may use the comment section to raise questions to avoid interruption to the resource speaker. And also, you may have some coffee and water with you to keep rehydrated and active during the discussion. You may also rename yourselves to our format. So first is your LGU, where you're in, or agency, dash your name for us to properly acknowledge po your name. So I hope this is all clear po to our participants. So at this juncture, let us have a roll call of our Zoom participants. Our Facebook Live viewers may also comment their names so that we can mention them via Facebook Live. Okay, so let me first start with our Zoom participants. So of course, we have our resource speakers from Anti-Red Tape Authority. Good afternoon. Uh, Sir Ron Rocavo, good afternoon po. Thank you for coming. And also, uh, we have from our DICT Marinduque, uh, our provincial officer, Ma Maria Frances Pecanya. And also, we have our information systems analyst for Palawan and Romblon. We have Sir Rick Arzaga and Ms. Wena Foja. And also, our speaker for DICT, we have here uh, Mr. Leo Paglikawan, information systems analyst of DICT 4A. And also we have here from, of course, our Technical Operations Division Head, Engineer Norley A. Tabo. Good afternoon. And we also have our uh, colleagues here, Ms. Jeanette Asi. And also um, we have from Binangonan LGU, Sir Jerwin Valdez. Good afternoon. Po. And also we have from Dumaran Palawan LGU, Sir Philip Jason Sadang. Good afternoon. Po. And also, we have from El Nido and our sharer of best practice, Mr. Dennis Abroso. Good afternoon. And also acknowledging the presence of our participants from LGU Boac, Marinduque. Good afternoon po sa inyo. And also, we have from Imo City, Cavite, Ma Maria Eleanor Laureles. Good afternoon po. And also, we have from Nara, Palawan, Mr. Jimwell Ramirez. Good afternoon. And also with us is Mr. Carmelito Antonio. So you may rename yourself po, no? so that we know where LGU are in. And also we have participants from Puerto Princesa City, Palawan. We have Ms. Jessa Badajos and Ms. Charmaine. Good afternoon po. And also we have Mr. Mark David Estacio. And we have also... Uh, Engineer Alvin Pala is Regencia from Provincial Capital. And also Mr. Ernesto Incorporado, Ms. Florine P. Garibay. And we have participants from Gasan LGU Marinduque, Ms. Maribel Valenzuela. And also uh, we have here Ms. Gladys Estrada. We also have participants from Ibaan Batangas, uh, Ms. Vanessa. And together with her is Miss or Sir Merly Andal. Yan. And also we have from GI, GSIS Batangas, Mang Jasmine Aquino, good afternoon. And also we have Miss uh, Tor Jason Adrian Librado, Miss Israel Kaimor, Mr. Jose Mateo, uh, Miss Joy Kenneth Biasong, and we have also Miss Joyce Roldan. And of course, we have from LGCDD, DILG4A, our resource speaker, Ms. Monet. Good afternoon po. And also, we have here additional from BOAC, Mr. Jacob Montebergen. And also, we have additional from City of Imus, Mr. Rolando de la Cruz. And we have from LGU Ojongan Romblon, we have Mr. Kim Faderon. We also have from LGU Rizal, um, I don't know if this is Occidental or Palawan. Okay, so Miss Jean Marga. And we also have from LGU San Fernando Romblon, BPLO representative. And we also have LGU San Jose, Mindoro, Occidental. So Mr. John Christopher Lee. And for San Fernando po pala, no, si Mr. John Raymart. Okay, and also we have from LGU Baco, 
si Sir Jason Angkako, and also we have LGUJ, Ms. Lynn A. Gutlay, and we also have additionals from LGU Gaza and Mr. Edgar Arcelda, and also Ms. Maria Jesus M. Gosh. And also additional for EMUS, we have Ms. Ruby Concepcion, and also we have from Palawan Rizal, uh, we have Ms. Jean Marga. We also have from Naik Cavite, Ms. Criza Paula Nazareno, Ms. Mary Grace Basa, and Ms. Mary Grace Sena. And we have from NEUST, Mr. Christopher De Jose. And we have from PLM, Mr. Rachel Joanti De Guzman. And also we have PSUC uh, from NARA LGU, Ms. Maria Felo Maclap. And also from Puerto Princesa, we have Mr. Philip B. Ong. And also our provincial officer from uh, DICT Region 4A, Quezon, Mr. Ralph De La Torre. Good afternoon. And also we have Mr. Randolph R. Fajardo, uh, Ms. Rose Angie Soriano, Ms. Roel Publico, and Ms. Maricris C. Rodriguez from BFP Pila. And we have from Tagkawayan, Quezon, Ms. Angela R. S. Mas. And we have from Jamaica, uh, Ms. Jamaica Bongalos. Additional from LGU Emo City, we have Mr. Roel Maniago, Mr. Uh, Rolando De La Cruz, and Mr. or Ms. Telma H. Samson. So for those who are live, so let us check po, no? Ayan, kung may nag-comment po sa ating live. Ayan, meron po, no? So we have, ayan, meron po tayong from Ms. G. Luna Morales from Occidental Mindoro, Mr. Ian Higa and Ms. Joy Kenneth Piasong, no? Pati sa FB, nandun po siya. And Ms. Uh, Aileen Camilo Flor and Ms. Maria Soledad Barisma and Ms. Florites uh, Obial Sakay. Good afternoon po from Cagayan de Oro City naman. And also, may humabal po no, si Mr. Jesso Layman. Good afternoon po sa inyo. So with that po, those are our participants and they are expected po no, to come in pa po as we conduct our event. Yeah. So thank you po sa ating mga participants and uh, to those na hindi po natawag, apologies, maybe we could highlight na lang po later no, pag nabalikan po na. So those are the roll call po of our participants. Currently, we have 70 participants via Zoom and we have 25 participants via FB Live. So again, we would like to remind everyone to please fill up their attendance and the link is shared to your chat box. So at this juncture, for us to proceed on our event proper, so let us have virtually our very own director of the ICT Regions 4A and 4B, Director Cheryl C. Ortega, to share her opening remarks virtually. Director Carl C. Sarimando of DILG Mimaropa to Director Carl Joseph San Monte of DTI Mimaropa, partner LGUs, our dedicated IBPLF team, ladies and gentlemen, an eventful afternoon amidst our National ICT Month celebration. Just a month ago, I came upon a post by a local business owner in Palawan that stated, 10 minutes lang, nakuha ko na agad. The businesswoman was referring to how she was able to get her business permit from LGU San Vicente in Palawan in just a matter of minutes compared to the traditional process that took hours and sometimes days. And we are delighted to share that this was made possible through San Vicente's adoption of the DICT's business permit and licensing system soon to be known as E-Local Government Unit or E-Local Government Unit ELGU Business Permits and Licensing System. Testimonies such as this has further reinforced my personal belief that digital transformation is not just about technology. It is about empowering businesses, transcending traditional barriers, connecting communities, enriching lives, and forging a digital future for our country, all of which are the end goal of RA 11032 
or the ease of doing business. Align with the AODB, your DICT together with our esteemed partners, PILG, ARTA, DTI, and other participating agencies are resolutely committed to supporting our partner LGUs in their digital transformation journey. Part of our support is the provision of the business permit and licensing system free of charge. This initiative aims to streamline and expedite the business application process, transforming face-to-face -face transactions into virtual interactions. Not only is the system itself free, but our dedicated TICP personnel are always ready to provide technical support and assistance. With this, I enjoin everyone to take full advantage of this event, as well as all the free services and technologies that the ICT offers as a platform for transformative change and digital innovation. In today's changing global trends, it is now more than ever that we need to embrace ICT in order to rise to the challenges and demands of the times. Once again, Good afternoon and onwards, we continue in building a better nation through digital transformation. Okay, thank you very much to our very own Director Charlie C. Ortega of the ICT Regions 4A and 4B for the opening remarks. Okay, also we would like to acknowledge, of course, the, uh, the participation of the DILG 4A Calabarzon under Director Ariel Iglesia for sending us our resource speaker who will share guidelines and policies about the automation of business permit and application process. Okay, thank you very much po, again to our regional director. Okay, at this juncture, um, may we call on our first resource speaker from the Anti-Red Tape Authority Southern Luzon. He is also a project development officer three. So good afternoon, Mr. Jose Rondo D. Uh, Good afternoon, Sir Jose. Ayun, sir. Uh, medyo uh, hindi po clear yung audio nila, sir. Apologies. How about this one po? Can you hear me po? Ayan, sir. Loud and clear na po kayo. Ayan. So, once again po, good afternoon. And thank you for inviting the Arta Southern Luzon to this very important event. Ano po. In behalf of our head, uh, Dr. Carlson Mopte and our team, we are grateful about this opportunity for allowing us to share and partake this momentous event that we're going to partake with our stakeholders. So, my topic this afternoon is about the EODB um, uh, law, uh, especially highlighting the um, EBOS or the Electronic Business Construction. So, and also, may I kindly request from the host also, please allow us to share our screen. Thank you. Noted, sir. Uh, for the meantime, we will be making you as a host, sir. Pa transfer na lang po pabalik later after the discussion. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you, sir. I, I think you can also include uh, Jana Pinales or Noted. what account is she? Herlene, Herlene Hernandez po. Uh, she Herlene. will be the one to share the screen. Yeah. Okay. Po. So I'll be making Ma'am Herlene as host for the meantime. Thank you. Okay, so while waiting for with the screen sharing, so of course, um, to set up our expectation with this kind of Recording orientation, in progress. the main objective of this um, topic is for us to have the overview of what is electronic business one-stop shop. I know this is very relevant to us, especially for some of us who are starting and some of us are already um, having, um, let's say, for example, a pipeline about this program. But of course, to give us... Um, commonality about this electronic business one-stop shop. It is for us, it's good for us to have this uh, orientation para magkaroon po tayo ng, um, uh, let's say, for example, a wider and objective idea. 
So can we have the next screen, please? So of course, um, everything that under a tape authority is doing, it has always a legal basis. And on this kind of um, electronic business one-stop shop, the basis for this is, of course, the RA 11032, uh, Section 11, which says, streamline procedures for the issuance of local business licenses, clearances, permits, and certifications, or authorization. So, nung nilagdan po yung patas na to, it was given that all of us must streamline. But um, the law gave us an ample time to have the the boss or business one-stop shop. For that, for that being said, uh, the law gave us a leeway to have a collocated boss. So meaning to say, physically, it has to be there. But three years after that, it is now mandatory for us to have that um, electronic business one-stop shop. And basing it from the three years um, effectivity of the law, which is 2018, so 2021, if we can remember, um, all of us are expected to have this EBOS in our localities. Next slide, please. Okay, so here are the um, issuances that are issued by ARTA and, of course, with other agencies. A joint Memorandum Circular Guidelines on Processing Business Permits, Related Clearances and Licenses in All Cities and Municipalities. This was issued on April 2021, followed again by some modifications on March 29, 2021, the ARTA Memorandum Circular 2021-02, or the circular on the automation of business permit and licensing system or EBOS in compliance with the requirements of Section 11. And of course, it was being followed again by on June 15, 2021, by ARTA Memorandum Circular 2021-05 or the reporting mechanism on the compliance of automation requirements of Section 11C of the same law. Next slide, please. Okay, so... Of course, what is EBOS? It is very important for us to understand first because most of the time, siguro naririnig natin yung boss. Pero ano nga ba yung electronic business one-stop shop? And what is the relevance of that of this, of this kind of provision in our law? Um, 5.9 of the law, electronic business one-stop shop says, it refers to an online portal or a website including the DICT IBPLS and the ARTA platforms and other similar online business permitting systems. So, ibig sabihin, this should be based on, it should be a website, okay, and a platform. Um, wala naman po siyang standard kung ano yung, kasi we can have our own. If our locality can provide your your own um, platform, then you may do so. However, um, it should be based online. Ano po? Kasi may minsan may ginagawa, dati kasi we have this notion na kapag connected na tayo inside, it is already electronic, but sometimes when we validate, ang lumalabas pala is it's only connected intranet. Ibig sabihin po, ay connected lang sila from within. But for those people who, want, who would want to transact with the LGU, ay kailangan pa rin nilang pumunta physically. Kasi ang connection pala ng kanilang mga computer or network ay from the inside. Hindi pa siya cloud-based or coming using the internet. Next slide, please. Okay, so here we have to remember this four. Ano po na category of the boss. The first one, which we are sharing this afternoon, is the fully automated boss. Ano nga ba yung classification na to? With online business registration system, with, with features of all functionalities provided in section 8.3.1 of the Joint Memorandum Circular 1 series of 2021. So fully automated later on, I'm going to discuss that. And of course, we have the partially automated, partially manual, and partly electronic online system. And the third, we have the physical and co-located boss. Ito naman ay kalimitan meron po sa ating opisina. And sometimes, these are also seasonal. Kapag nasa peak lang po tayo ng month of renewal and registration of businesses. And of course, the last, we have the no co-located boss. Ito talaga yung wala. Okay, so yung parang ginagamit pa rin nila is the old way of uh, transacting with the public. Next slide, please. The fully automated boss. Okay, a fully automated online business registration system with features described in Section 8.3.1, 
defining an EBOS will be the gold standard that the LGU shall implement. The EBOS, which assumes that all procedures from submission, okay, so we have to bear this in mind, that from submission, securing of the tax bill, payment and issuance of permits can be completed online, entails one-step process. So, ibig sabihin, talagang isang beses lang sila magsasubmit. That is in line with the, of course, the zero contact policy stipulated in our law. And of course, that is also from our joint memorandum circular. Next slide, please. Okay, what is now the fully automated boss? LGU must have the following functionalities to be considered as fully automated. The first one is, of course, um, it has to accept online or electronic submission of business permit applications using a unified application form, which an application can fill up or edit. Next, you also have to issue electronically the tax bill or order of payment. And the next is accept online payments using the online payments facilities and other payment gateways or alternative digital payment option. Okay. And of course, on the fourth, you also have to issue electronic version of permits, licenses, and clearances, which may be printed by business at the convenience of their offices which have the same level of authority as hard copies usually issued by LGU. So, ibig sabihin, hindi na siya nangangailangan na bumalik pa or pumunta pa sa opisina ang isang um, aplikante para kunin ang kanilang um, business permit. Kasi yung binigay sila from the online has already the same level of authority. So, katandaan po natin yung apat na po ito. So, I must also insert on this that, um, of course, even the attachments like, for example, submission of other supporting documents, dapat po ay online na rin. Hindi po siya ipapadala sa atin physically but using the same portal kung saan sila po ay nagre-renew or nagre-register ng kanilang business licenses. Okay po, next slide. Now, fully automated boss, other requirements. Ito naman po are supporting or other requirements for our fully automated boss. You have to provide a gateway facility linked with the courier services to allow physical delivery. Ito naman po ay option lang naman ng ating client kung gusto nila magpa-deliver pa ng kanilang hard copy. But on the four uh, stages that I mentioned a while ago, dapat yun pa lang suffice na to have a fully automated boss. Ito naman kasi minsan, we, we also must give consideration for our client who would want to have a physical copy of their, kasi minsan, they look at it as a souvenir, especially kapag po ay naka-frame, ano po, or nakalagay sa isang, kasi yung iba nakalagay talaga sa isang uh, mounted na frame, so okay lang yun. But however, the, the certificate or the license being issued through the online platform must suffice. Next. An online complaints or feedback mechanism related on the business permitting shall be integrated or made available in the EBOS and the, of the LGU. So, ibig sabihin, from that platform, nandun na rin po yung complaint mechanism or feedback mechanism. And of course, the next one, there should be a customized support. Kasi, um, of course, kapag physical, diba, we, we, we require an office to have um, public assistance complaint desk. So it is also the same with this platform. Dapat may mechanism tayo in place um, for us to air out, especially kapag mga technical glitches or um, questions related to to the licensing and re renewal of the license. Ay meron po talaga mga kasagot agad. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay. Still under the umbrella of fully, fully automated boss, we have the necessary conditions. Use of the unified application form for all permits related to business permit. Dapat po talaga ay unified yung kanilang form. Hindi po pa iba, -iba na ng form. Isa lang. Next is we also have to integrate the Bureau of Fire Protection if sick fee with the collection of fees by forging MOA with Bureau of Fire Protection. So uh, we also have to recognize that marami po mga LG, you find this sometimes challenging and po to have this MOA or Memorandum of Agreement with BFP. But of course, as the law dictates, we also have to forge this kind of um, agreement with our uh, BFP para po tayo makapag-proceed. 
And lastly, we also have to integrate the integration of barangay clearance fees in the tax bill assessment of application. So, kasi it will defeat the purpose if um, other requirement ay kailangan pang manggaling sa ibang platform. So, dapat palang, doon palang sa platform na ginawa ho natin or meron ho tayo, ay dapat itong mahalaga kami from the Bureau of Right Protection and Barangay Clearances must be integrated. At kasama na rin po doon sa receipt. Ano po. Of course, digital signature. Ito po ay lagi sinasabi ng ARTA. Um, Kasi ito ay very important na magkaroon po tayo ng valid um, digital signatures. Ano po? So, local government units shall be used or shall use authenticated digital signatures or electronic signatures in the business permit that will be issued to the applicant. So, LGUs are directed to avail of the recognized or the recognize the use of PNPKI of the DICP. So, kami po sa ARTA, lahat po kami ini-encourage na magkaroon. And of course, we also encourage everyone to have this. Okay, kasi po, um, without this, paano po tayo makakapag-proceed doon naman sa valid na license that our clientele are asking from us kapag po ang ating pirma ay hindi valid. Next slide, please. Okay, I just want to reiterate this. The functionalities of an EBOS, in summary, ano po? Okay, so first, it has to accept an online or electronic submission of business permit applications. Dapat po na-accept at also the attachments, just like the uh, supporting documents, ay dapat pwede po siyang ipasta from there. And accept online payments using online payment facilities. So, to name of the few, so we have the bank transactions, dapat naka, kasi kailangan din ng MOA natin on that. Of course, some others are using other, just like Gcash, but it has to be integrated in our platform. And of course, you also have to release electronically the tax bill or order of payment. Okay? And last, once again, is the electronic version of these certifications and licenses must be with the same authority as those that are printed. So, number one, necessary conditions. These are the necessary conditions. Of course, you have to use the unified applications form. Number two, integration of the Bureau of Fire required documents. Three, integration of barangay clearance fees. And of course, further the GU eBOS must be a website portal. So, I just want to reiterate it. Kanina sinabi ko po yun. Na, kasi may, let's say for example, two months ago, nag-visit kami sa isang LGU and somehow they were claiming na um, mayroon na pa silang functional e-boss but upon validation, mayroon silang connection from within. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng kanilang kunwari from, from the cashier, yung, yung mga process coming from the other offices, ay pumapasok na po sa cashier para doon sila magbayad. But upon digging it deeper, yun pala ay naka-intranet lang. Ibig sabihin po, they are not using internet for that. So, naka-connect naka lang siya from the inside. So, pag ganoon, hindi pa rin po siya fully automated. Bakit? Yung interface po kasi ng client ay dapat kahit nasa bahay siya, nasa office man siya, or kahit saan man siya, nasa mobile man siya, o nasa laptop, makakapag-apply pa rin siya. Kasi kapag ganoon po yung ating system, kailangan pa rin pumunta ng ating client sa, sa ating mga opisina. Next slide, please. Mayroon, ho dit, mayroon din po tayong partially or partly automated boss. Ano naman po yung mga um, classifications nito, mga conditions nito? If there are one or more missing e-boss functionalities, kapag may kulang mo sa apat na sinabi ko po kanina, automatically it will fall to partially automated boss. If the business permit application entails online and manual right. submission. Okay po, so next slide please. Partially automated boss. Ito po yung apat. Okay, so below are or the example of the standard four steps. Number one, setting up appointment for the submission of the application. Second, submission of the application form and documentary requirements. Third, receiving the tax order of payment or tax bill based on the assessment of business tax fees and charges and payment and of the tax bill 
and receipt shall of the business and related permit. So, okay, okay. you. Sorry, Bob. Ayoko. Pero hindi ba? Yan na, hindi ko marunin. Bakit mo aking ano sa babay, ay ko nung aking, kung baka mahina siya. Saan ko na yung ay ko nung... Okay, uh, let me proceed po. So, local government units transitioning to the EBOS shall ensure that the business registration shall not exceed four steps. So, kasi yung iba, okay po, so we have to recognize that those that are LGUs transitioning po from the, let's say, co-located boss to e-boss, nagtra-transition sila. But of course, if you're going to check on your platform or system, dapat yung apat, hindi mag-exceed sa apat yung process ninyo. Um, para po makamakonsider kayo as partially automated boss or transitioning to the e-boss. Next slide, please. Ito naman po yung physical at collocated boss. Again, this is from Section 11 of EODB law. A one-stop business facilitation service. So ito po ay very common sa atin. Ano, kapag po, dati kasi it's very, it was very popular to have the boss or the business one-stop shop. So very common po ito dati. Ito po ay tinatawag na collocated boss. Here in after is referred to as the business one-stop shop for the city municipalities business permitting and licensing system to receive one process manual or electronic submission of application for license, clearance, permit, certification, or authorization shall be established within the cities or municipalities. Negotiation center as provided for under the Republic Act then 644, otherwise known as no negotiation. Okay, so... Yun po, sinasabi ko nga kanina, so this is very popular po. Especially for those who are not yet aware of this mandatory requirement from the law na kailangan magkaroon tayo ng e -books. Next slide, please. Now, ano naman yung mga consideration for physical or co-located boss? A physical boss shall have a front-end section for client interface and backroom operations where the offices involved in the business registration process are co-located. Okay po, so hindi, kasi minsan iniisip po nang natin, okay, so nakapag na nasa isang lugar na ho tayo ay uh, co-located na ho yun. Tapos um, yung, yung client natin ay palipat-lipat pa rin. So just to somehow realign our mindset on that, ang tinatawag kasi co-located boss ay parang naka-online pa rin siya somehow yung principle na yun. Napupunta si client, one single window approach Ibibigay niya yung kanyang mga uh, requirement, mga requisitos niya for that specific application. Tapos yung papel na ko yung lalakad. Kung baka iikot, iikot. Doon sa mga concerned um, office or division. Tapos si client naman, doon na pupunta sa, sa releasing. Or sa minsan kahit doon sa my payment. Okay, so a queuing system that would differentiate or differentiate the applications or applicants with a single and multiple applications, those to be served with special lanes such as, okay, ito yung mga, ma alam naman po natin to, senior citizens, persons with disabilities, and of course, a specific transactions such as payment of tax bill only or claiming of permits and documents. Transactions window conforming to three-step procedures in getting a business permit, and of course, a public assistance desk to attend to the concern of the transacting public. Ito ay very, very important pa rin na dapat yung ating pakdiho na tinatawag or public assistance desk ay hindi lang po table. Kasi kalimitan naman yung iba, hindi naman makikita natin table lang. So dapat meron pong tao. The no-colocated boss. Ito naman ay talagang wala silang boss. Okay? The no-colocation of all offices that issue business-related permits such as but not limited to planning, treasurer's office, health office, environment office, of course, the Bureau of Fire Protection, the co-located offices shall simultaneously assess the business permit and applications and provide immediate feedback to the DPLO on the action taken on the application. So ito po ay talagang separate pa rin po sila, tapos si client po yung iikot, tapos sila na po yung magbibigay ng feedback doon sa DPLO. Now, pag po tayo mga nabigyan ng awards when it comes to fully automated boss. So, of course, 
Uh, marami po nagsasubmit. Based, on, based from our records, meron po tayong 222 LGUs na nagsasabi that they already have the EBOS. But that is, all, again, subject to verification. But so far, we already gave seven or eight commendations to LGUs who are fully compliant with this um, requirement of the law. That ARTA provides commendation upon the site validation. Ito po, ha? again, upon on-site validation. Kailangan po makita ni ARTA to the local government units which successfully implemented a fully automated EBOS based on the GMC. Okay, so we have the Paranaque. Sila po yung pinakauna, January 30 po, 2023. The Quezon City, Valenzuela, or sa Manila City, Muntinlupa, Navotas, Marikina, Lapu-Lapu, the first city outside National Capital Region. And of course, we have the Cagayan de Oro recently on June 22, 2023. So sila po yung nabigyan ng commendations of that. And of course, ang um, ating reference material, these are available in our website. We have the advisory number 002, course here sa 2023, and ARTA says All of this, again, ay nasa website po na. Next slide, please. Okay, so itong advisory po na ito, ito po ay binalabas lamang po bago lang. So as you know, siguro lahat po tayo nakareceive nito. Ano po? That released of last May 11, 2023 with all agencies. Reminder to comply with the requirements under the law or the ease of doing business. An efficient government service delivery act of 2018 and its implementing IRR or the IRR, sorry. To remind the local government units there, ARTA compliance is through submitting the following links. So lahat naman po tayo nabigyan ng mga link na to. Pertaining um, specifically to the compliance or compliances that we have to submit. And of course, the advisory is uploaded to all ARTA websites. So lahat naman po ng mga link na ito ay nandun sa Citizens Charter Committee on the Red Tape, the whole government approach or engineering plan, and so on and so forth. Okay, ito po yung mga ARTA issuances. Um, you may have that, you may screenshot that for your reference. Next slide, please. So here again, you may take a screenshot on that so that you may have a reference. Again, all of these are can be found in our website. And of course, that's it. If um, you have questions, um, nandiyan naman po yung aming mga trunk line and cell phone number, I think. We also have landline. And of course, we have our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So once again, thank you so much for this um, invitation that you gave us, Arta Southern Luzon. And uh, of course, this will not be the last. Ano po. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you very much to our resource speaker from ARTA, Southern Resident, Sir Ron Rocabo. So it is indeed presented all of the joint memorandum circulars and also some part or highlights for, no, of the EODV. No? And we hope by uh, listening to our ARTA partners, no, our LGU will become more aware now on the guidelines and policies in relation to the automation of the business permit. So before we proceed on our second speaker, we would like first to ask our participants if you have any questions to ponder. So we will be accommodating, I guess, three questions. And the rest, po, no, as mentioned by our ARTA partners, so you may send it to their hotlines provided po earlier. Okay, so may we ask, po, or maybe we could just get a reaction na lang siguro, no, for us to... Uh, verify if our participants have listened carefully during the discussion of the ARTA. So can you please type number one is if everything is clear on your end based on ARTA's discussion. So can our participants type number one? Okay, so it seems sir, no, that they are uh, very aware now no, on, on all of the discussions that have been shared by our ARTA partners. So thank you very much for sa ating mga participants. Okay? 
So with that po, uh, we would like to request again to return the host access po no, sa ating uh, account. Ayan po. Yes, si Ma'am Herlin, may we request uh, to return po yung hosting sa DICTR 4B, Ed Gonzalez po. Um, so that I can present po no, yung ating mga following presentations. For the copy of the slides, I think, Sir Ron, uh, can we have the copy of your PDF so that we can share po to our participants later on? Sure po. Uh -huh. okay, we can, we can also give you a map of this. Thank you. Okay. So the presentation of ARTA will be given po no, after this event. So again po, uh, may we request Ma'am Herling to return po yung host access. Thank you very much po, Ma'am Herling. So at this juncture, since we don't have any questions no, from ARTA, uh, we will be um, awarding them a certificate of appreciation for being our resource speaker. So allow me to read the caption. This certificate of appreciation is hereby presented to Mr. Jose Rondo D. Rocabo, uh, apologies no, of the Anti-Red Tape Authority. So uh, for his invaluable insight shared as a resource speaker during the Integrated Business Permit and Licensing System with the Team Automation of Business uh, Permit Application Process of the DICT 4A and 4B held today, June 26, 2020. So we will be sending you, sir, a signed and correct copy of your certificate via email po. So thank you very much, sir, for your attendance. So may we request for a photo opportunity? Thank you. Thank you so much. Arta po. So Ma'am Jeanette, or at ang ating team from the... Ayan. So siguro let's have a photo opportunity. Sa ating mga participants, you can open your cameras po. Ayan, para magkaroon po tayo ng photo op with our first speaker. So, kontayin lang po natin itong iba. Okay, at a count of three po, no? uh, medyo maraming pages po tayo. So, two pages. So, at a count of three, smile po tayo for the first page. One, two, three, smile po tayo. Okay, sa so next page po. One, two, three, smile. Okay, again, thank you very much, Mr. Jose Rocabo, for our uh, first topic and our partner from ARTA. So, yan po, no? So, now at this juncture, let us proceed on the next um, topic, which will be discussed by our partners from the ILG4A. So, uh, may I call on Ms. Monet? Tandicho, from the Department of Interior and Local Government, Calabarza. Hello po, good afternoon. Hello po, good afternoon ma'am. So I'll be making you as a host po, no? Para po um, makapag-share po kayo ng presentation. Okay po. Ayan ma'am, access granted po. Ayan, good afternoon po, pasensyo na po. Um, okay lang po ba yung audio ko? Please type 2 if okay po. <laughs> Ayan. So, maraming maraming salamat po. On behalf po of um, R.D. Ariel O. Iglesia and my Division Chief J. Beltran, I am Monet Landicho po from the Local Government Capability Development Division. And I, I will be sharing with you uh, my knowledge on the ease of doing business law or RA 11032. I'll turn off po muna my video para ayan, para hindi po kumain ang internet bandwidth. So, now po, sabi ko nga po kanina, I will be sharing with you what I know about RA 11032 or the ease of doing business and Efficient Government Service Delivery Act of 2018. So, um, ito po EODB law natin does not only cover um, business-related transactions, but also non-business-related transactions. Um, kasi nga po, if mapapansin niyo yung kanyang title, it's 
Ease of Doing Business and Efficient Government Service Delivery Act. So not only business related but all um related transactions pagdating po sa government. So this was signed into law on May 28, 2018 and its implementing rules and regulations were released on June same year, June 2018. So gaya po ng sinabi kanina ni um Sir from Arta, Sir Rocabo, um, three years after yes. the implementation, yeah, three years after the implementation of the law, I dapat or inaassume na natin na yung PPLS ng, ng cities and municipalities are already automated. So sino nga po ba ang covered ng RA 11032? So we have um so we have all government offices and agencies including national government agencies so um kami po sa DILG kasama din po dito sa EODB law syempre yung mga taga uh, DICT din DTI at lahat po ng national government agencies ay sakop ng batas so kung ano man pong nilalaman ng batas ay dapat din po sinusunod ng mga national government agencies. We also have of course our local government units, government owned and controlled corporations or yung mga GOCCs natin and other government instrumentalities whether located in the Philippines or abroad. So ganun po kalawak yung coverage ng ating um, EODB law. And ang isa pong objective ng EODB law is to streamline all government processes, systems and processes. So paano nga po ba natin daw ito sisimulan? So una po, we have to undertake cost compliance analysis, time and motion study. So titingnan natin yung mga fees and charges ba na sinisingil natin, commensurate pa siya dun sa mga um, resources na ginagamit ng LGUs or baka naman masyadong mataas yung, yung sinisingil natin. So we have to check on that and mag-conduct din po tayo ng time and motion studies. Um, time and motion studies parang um, from the time na nag-apply yung client natin hanggang makuha yung kunyari business permit na nire-request niya from us or from the LGU. Gaano siya katagal, gaano siya kabilis, ano-ano yung mga pinagdaanan niya. Um, parang ititail natin yung clients natin para malaman yung actual na pinagdadaanan nila. Kasi if mag-base po tayo sa ating citizen's charter lamang, baka po hindi natin makuha yung real picture na pinagdadaanan po nung, nung clients natin pagdating sa uh, mga processes natin sa um, sa LGU or kami po sa uh, DILG or sa iba pa pong government agencies. And then undergo evaluation and improvement of their transactions and systems procedure. Um, Siyempre, if may ma-identify tayo na ay, ito pala yung nakakatagal, um, i-evaluate natin kung ano na yung um, ano yung naging improvement if if na kung na, na uh, sakaling natanggal na natin yung mga unnecessary steps or yung mga burdensome na mga processes natin undergo regulatory impact assessment to the proposed regulations initiate review of existing policies and operations uh, mag, baka po magtaka kayo bakit pa kailangan i-review yung mga policies natin kasi baka po meron tayong mga ordinances or mga issuances sa uh, atin na kunya resabihin Kanyari po may ordinance na bago ka kumuha ng, ng business permit, dapat dadaan ka muna sa ganitong office, magpapa-approve ka muna kay ganitong office. So baka naman hindi naman necessary, wala namang legal basis na dapat dumaan pa sa ganitong office. I-amend na po natin or i-repeal na po natin yung, yung policy natin na yun. So kaya kailangan natin i-review yung mga existing policies natin. Kami po sa DILG, we have... A uh, program on that, yung regulatory reform for LGUs na nagko-call po for LGUs to to amend, to repeal, to merge yung mga policies na pwede namang i-outdated na or for updating para mas nare-review po natin. Baka kasi hindi na siya um, applicable sa current scenario natin ngayon. And then comments with the re-engineering of their systems and procedures. Kasama na po dito yung pag inform sa mga clients natin kung ano na kung ano na yung process natin 
um, pag-update po ng Citizens Charter natin. Siyempre, huwag natin kakalimutan. And speaking of Citizens Charter, nakapaloob din po sa RA 11032 that all government agencies shall set up their most current and updated Citizens Charter and must indicate yung comprehensive and uniform checklist of requirements for each type of application or request. So, kapag po may checklist tayo, makikita agad ng clients natin ano yung kailangan niyang i-comply pa, ano yung kailangan niyang i-prepare para makuha yung service or request na kinakailangan niya. Um, procedure to obtain a particular service, ano-ano po yung mga steps na dadaanan niya. Persons responsible for each step. Um, sino ang dapat nag-handle ng step na ito. Maximum time to conclude the process, gaano siya katagal or kabilis. Documents to be presented by the applicant or requesting party. Uh, in relation po ito doon sa uniform checklist of requirements. Kasi um, hindi naman po pwedeng magkaiba yung dalawa kung ano po yung um, uh, mga requirements. Siyempre yun po yung documents na kailangan nilang i-present. Amount of fees, magkano yung babayaran? If fixed po yung amount na babayaran, fixed po yung ilalagay natin doon na amount. Pero if hindi po siya fixed, say for example, um, yung building permit, ang um, computation po niyan, I believe ay depende sa size ng area. So ang ilalagay po natin, ano yung formula to compute yung amount of fees and procedure for filing complaints, syempre. Ayan. Uh, kasama din po sa RA 11032 ang adoption of zero contact policy kung saan sinasabi po na no government officer or employee shall have any contact in any manner unless strictly necessary with any requesting party concerning an application or request. Pero syempre, um, may exception naman daw po during the preliminary assessment. Yung i-evaluate yung mga documents para ma-explain kay client natin if ever may mga kulang pa siyang documents or may mga uh, per clarifications pa. Pero as much as possible, zero contact policy po tayo. Kaya nga din po, ang DICT may mga dinedevelop na, na mga systems para kahit sa bahay po, makakapag-apply tayo ng business permit or building permit and makakuha na rin natin online na siya rin naman pong um, ina-advocate ng anti-red tape authority sa sa ibos e natin. Yes po, hello. Okay po ba? At isa pong mahalagang um, nilalaman ng law natin. By the way, I'm not a lawyer po ah. Um, ito po ay ilang beses na rin lang namang na-present na, na, na sa amin. Kaya po, uh, may mga mai-share na po ako sa inyo. Ayan. So, ang um, isa pa pong mag uh, important ang nilalaman ng batas natin ay yung um, processing time. So, we have 3720. So, kapag po tayo ay simple transactions, dapat po 3 working days, tapos na po. Or nakompleto na po yung um, service na hinihingi sa atin ng atin pong client. For complex transactions, we have 7 working days. And for highly technical um, application, we have 20 working days. Um, yung definition po kung ano yung papasok sa mga simple, complex, and highly technical ay all indicated or defined po siya sa implementing rules and regulations ng ating um, 11.032 na pwede ko din naman pong i-share sa inyo after the presentation. Please note that the maximum time prescribed may be extended only once for the same number of days na kailangan pong naka-indicate din sa citizen's charter. So, ibig sabihin po nito, um, kung ang business permit and licensing system po natin or ang business permit and licensing process natin ay simple transaction, uh, dahil isa naman talaga siyang simple transaction, dapat po within three working days tapos na natin or nakapag-issue na tayo ng business permit. If ever po, for any valid reason na hindi talaga natin siya mako-complete within three working days, pwede siyang ma-extend for another three working days. Same po for complex transactions, pwede siyang ma-extend for another seven working days. And for highly technical, pwede siyang ma-extend for 
um, 20 working days. Pero only once lang po natin siya may extend. Pero wag naman po na na lahat na lang dahil sabihin natin allowed naman sa batas na mag-extend. Wag naman po lahat i-extend natin. Siyempre may mga special cases and valid cases kung kailan lang po natin i-extend yung atin pong um, service delivery sa kanila. And wag po natin kalimutan na i-inform natin si client kapag mag extend tayo para hindi naman po si client umaasa na um, after three working days, um, makukuha ko na yung aking business permit. So, i-inform natin si client na mag extend tayo para hindi po siya nag mag mag follow up sa atin at hindi rin po siya maghihintay sa atin. Kumbaga tayo na po ang mag-initiate na i-inform natin sila. And for those naman po na Okay po. So, it seems no nagkaroon po ng technical difficulty ang ating uh, current speaker po. Ayan, so, ayan ma'am. Okay po. Ayan, sorry ayan po. po. Um, Sige po. Pasensya na po. Sige po. Hindi po ako makashare. Uh, yes po, ma'am. We'll... Ayan po. I think pa'am nakahost na po kayo, ma'am. You can share na po. Ayan. Hello po. Yes, ma'am. Loud and clear po kayo. Ayan. Dito po ba ako tumigil sa approval ng sanggunian? Yes po, ma'am. Okay. Ayan nga po. For those applications po na nagre-require ng approval ng sanggunian, uh, meron pong inalaw ang EODB law to process within 45 working days that may be extended for another 20 working days lang po. So para po sa mga, again, sa mga permits, licenses, clearances, or authorizations na nagre-require po ng approval ng sanggunian bayan, panglunsod or panlalawigan, meron pong 45 working days na may be extended for another 20 working days. Ayan. I'm sure alam naman po ito ng ating mga BPLOs. Ito po yung streamlined procedures natin for the issuance of local business licenses, clearances, permits, or authorizations. So, um, the use of unified business application form kung saan po lahat ay nandoon na, nakapaloob na, information po na kailangan ng ating Bureau of Fire at iba pa pong offices um, involved in the issuance of business permit, dapat nandoon na po sa unified business application form natin. Hindi na po, para maiwasan na po yung paulit-ulit na pag-fill out ng client natin na ang kanila pong information na pare-pare, halos pare-pareho lang din naman po yung information na kinukuha from them. Also, the establishment of business one-stop shop or yung atin pong boss. And ulitin ko lang po yung binanggit kanina ni Mr. Rocabo that cities and municipalities are mandated to automate their business permitting and licensing system within three years. So 2018, lumabas po yung batas. So we have 2019, 2020, and 2021. So dapat po 2021 po automated na. 2021 na po yung ating... Um, business permit and licensing process. And isa pa pong bago sa RA 11032 ay barangay clearances and permits related to doing business shall be applied, issued, and collected at the city or municipality. Ibig sabihin po, um, ang ginamit po na word dito ay shall be, kumbaga no choice po tayo but to incorporate and integrate the barangay clearance process sa atin po sa atin pong city or municipality. But, um, take note lamang po na only for relate do, um, related to doing business ng mga barangay clearance. All, for all other purpose po, sa barangay pa rin po siya i-apply, i-issue at i-collect yung bayad. Pero for, for uh, related to doing business sa city or municipality siya. And at the local government level, 
dito po sa baba, the city or municipal business process and licensing office shall not require the same documents already provided by an applicant or requesting party to the local government department. So, kunyari po, nag-require na ako ng isang document, huwag na po natin i-require ulit sa same, ano naman po, sa isang uh, na na-i-provide na po sa atin. Kung baga tayo na po ang makipag-usap sa atin pong um, kapwa department. Ayan. Para po maiwasan na ilang be, ilang beses kukuha si client kunyari po ng barangay kiran. So, ang ang iniiwasan din po natin dito ay gagastos pa si client ng, ng additional fee sa parehong procedure naman po. So, yun na lang din po yung iwasan natin. Ayan. Mga Pagiging redundant. Yan. Thank you so much, sir. Yan. Ito naman po ay para sa BFP. And ito din po, um, collocation with business one-stop shop, yung atin pong BFP. Uh, enter into agreements with LJUs allowing the latter to be deputized as assessors and or collecting agents for the fire fees. Um, in, by virtue of BFPMC 2020-033, pwede na po ang um, atin pong local fire marshal to enter into agreement with the LGU para maiwasan po na magbabayad ako sa, kunyari po ako si client, magbabayad ako sa BFP, magbabayad ako sa LGU. Yung dalawang beses ko pong pagbabayad na yun, dalawang step na po agad yun. E ang, ang standard po natin, three steps lamang or four steps kapag nasa transition tayo to full automation. So, kapag fully automated na po tayo, or hindi po tayo magiging full, fully automated, kung hindi integrated po, or kung hindi, uh, yun nga, hindi integrated yung BFP process sa atin pong BPLS. Um, develop an, an online or electronic mechanism for such applications and I'm sure alam naman po ito ng mga taga BFP that they shall not sell, offer, or recommend specific brands of fire extinguishers and other fire safety equipment to any applicant or requesting party or business entity. Dahil ito po ay may kaukulang penalty or violation na punishable by imprisonment. And sa CSC po, meron po tayong anti-red tape unit na siyang nag-utilize ng report card survey at siya pong magtatanggap, magre-review, mag-hear at magde-decide on complaints on airing government employees and officials and non-compliance. And speaking po of non-compliance, ano nga po ba yung mga actions na um, liable sa RA 11032. Una po, refusal to accept application or request with complete requirements being submitted by an applicant or requesting party without due cause. Um, based, uh, example po, based sa kanyang checklist of requirements and sa citizen's charter natin, kompleto naman po yung kanyang requirements. So, bakit po natin hindi tatanggapin? And if ever hindi talaga natin siya tanggapin without due cause, pwede na po tayo maging liable under 11.0.2. Imposition of additional requirements other than those listed in the citizen's charter. Kaya dapat po uh, i-review natin thoroughly kung ano po talaga yung nilalaman ng citizen's charter natin. Kasi ano man pong maitagdag natin na wala sa citizen's charter, pwede na po tayong maging liable sa batas. Um, same po with additional costs not reflected in the citizen's charter. Um, letter D po, failure to give the applicant or requesting party a written notice on the disapproval of an application or request. Um, example po, may natanggap tayong paper or document or, or um, request. Ngayon po, nung ini-evaluate na po natin siya, nakita natin na, na, na hindi pala siya pwedeng isuhan ng business permit. Uh, wag po nating hayaan si client na maghintay na wala naman pala siyang hinihintay. I-inform po natin siya officially na disapproved po or denied po yung kanyang request and ilalagay po natin doon kung bakit para ma-actionan po ni client or ma-comply niya pa kung ano pa po yung mga kailangan based po sa evaluation natin. Wag po nating nga hayaan na matenga na lang doon yung papel dahil, dahil lang disapproved siya. 
wag po nating iwanan sa ere yung client natin. I-inform natin siya. Same po, katulad nga po ng sinabi ko kanina, kapag mag extend po tayo, kung mag extend po tayo, dapat within the standard processing time set by RA 11032. Ano pong ibig sabihin doon? Example po, yung business permit, uh, mag extend tayo ng three working days pa ulit. Um, second working day pa lamang po, i-inform na natin si client natin na tayo po ay mag extend Para nga po, sa ika-third day, uh, hindi na po pupunta si client sa atin dahil na-inform natin siya ahead of time na mag extend tayo ng service sa kanila or mag extend pa yung days ng pagpo-provide natin sa kanila bago pa, ma- bago pa nila makuha ang kanilang um, business permit. Um, failure to render government services within the prescribed processing time without due cost. Yun lalampas po tayo sa 3720 and 45 working days. So pwede na po tayo maging liable under RE 11032. Verbal or written? Um, written po sana. Para mas official po. Para meron din po tayong copy or if ever na Kunyari po, i-reklamo tayo, may, pa, may hawak po tayong document duly received by our client or proof po na na-email natin kay client. Para din po, uh, para lang din po um, safe tayo if ever pong mag sila. Failure to attend to applicants or requesting parties who are within the premises of the go- office or agency concerned prior to the end of official working hours and during lunch break. Um, sabihin po natin ay 4.15 na Punta, uh, bukas na lang po kayo bumalik, pauwi na po kami so hindi po ganun um, failure or refuse, refusal to issue official receipts and fixing or collusion with fixers in consideration of economic and or other gain or advantage alam naman po natin, bawal ang fixer so Uh, mas nireiterate lang po sa batas na bawal po talaga ang fixer. And if ever pong mapatunayan na meron tayong violations, ano po naman ang penalty na pwedeng ipataw sa atin? Sa first offense po, you have six months suspension without pay. And kung inulit pa po natin, kanyari po hindi tayo nadala, second offense, disqualification po from public office. Bukod po doon, wala pa po tayong makukuhang retirement benefits. Wala na po tayong makukuhang retirement benefits, makukulong pa po tayo ng 1 to 6 years na may multa pa pong 500,000 pesos but not more than 2 million pesos. Administratively and criminally liable na po tayo. And criminal liability shall also be incurred through the Commission of Bribery, Panunuhol, extortion, pangingikil, or when the violation was done deliberately and maliciously to solicit favor in cash or in kind. So ito po ay some or yung salient features lamang po ng RA 11032. Hindi pa po ito yung kabuuan ng batas pero I would be very glad to share with you ang um, copy po ng law. Um, ito naman po ay nada-download although pwede ko din naman pong isend after ng, ng atin pong presentation. So yun lamang po for EODB law. Do you have any questions? Um, I think may isa pa po akong presentation about naman the standards ng atin pong um, BPLS GMC, yung atin pong revised guidelines. Any questions po on EODB law? Seeing none, hindi po hearing none, seeing none, wala naman po sa chat box, ay akin pong idediretso na if okay lang po sa ating organizers. Uh, yes ma'am, you may proceed po on the next presentation. Ay, thank you very much po. I hope clear po yung EOD below pero along the discussion, if may next ma may isip po yung tanong, okay lang naman po. So now, I will be presenting naman po sa inyo Streamlining and automating the processing of business permit and licensing system. Pasensya na po sa isang activity po, kaya po siguro may, may naririnig po kayong nagsasalita din. 
Pero lumayo na po ako. <laughs> Ayan. So, since 2010 pa lamang po, um, kami po, DILG and DTI, meron na po kaming inisyo na um, streamlined process. And dahil naman po nag evolve din tayo and yung mga processes natin, um, yung 2010 JMC po natin ay na-revise po nung 2016. Mas pinaikli po yung processing time. At uh, Noong 2018 nga po, dahil lumabas yung EODB law at medyo hindi, kumbaga hindi swak yung 2016 GMC natin, ni-revise po natin ito. Kaya po, um, ito po yung pinaka-recent natin na Joint Memorandum Circular, of course, with the Anti-Red Tape Authority, the Department of the Interior and Local Government, Department of Trade and Industry, and Department of Information and Communications Technology. So ito po ay hindi lamang po sa DILG, but ito po ay ina-advocate ng apat na ahensya po na nabanggit ko nga po kanya. Ayan. So bakit nga daw po? So ito po ang ay pre, ay directive pa noon ng atin pong former President Rodrigo Roa Duterte to ensure competitiveness and promote ease of doing business sa atin pong bansa kasama po to curb corruption and inefficiencies to provide better service delivery. Kasi po mas kukonti ang dinadaanan mas lesser po yung temptation, mas lesser po yung um, um, red tape. Pero hindi naman po natin sinasabi na may red tape sa atin atin po mga opisina pero kumbaga ginagawa po natin to para maiwasan of course to streamline government services and create truly efficient and people friendly processes and to ensure that the people receive the quality services that they surely deserve minus the de delays by the bureaucratic red tape um, kasi po tayo naniniwala tayo na kapag mabilis po ang proseso natin sa pag-issue, especially ng business permit, mas ma-attract po natin yung investors to put up a business sa atin pong um, LGU. At kapag po madami ang businesses, mas madami po tayong revenue na pwede po nating magamit sa delivery ng basic services or dagdag na services na pwede nating i-provide for our um, clients or for our constituents. Especially with the full devolution na madami po tayong or madami madadagdagan yung services na ibababa sa atin ng, ng national government. So, uh, ngayon po talaga mahalaga yung um, resource mobilization natin. Ayan. So, kasama na nga po dito yung EODB law. Ayan salient provisions po ng 11032. Na-discuss ko naman na po ito kanina. Kaya nga po ngayon, i-discuss ko na po yung ARTA DTI DIL GDI City JMC number 1 series of 2021. So, babing baby pa po ang JMC natin na ito. Ito po ay titled Guidelines for Processing Business Permits and Related Clearances and Licenses in All Cities and Municipalities. The purpose of the JMC is to guide LGUs and other related agencies, um, Bureau of Air Protection for the matter, in improving the business climate ng atin pong LGU to promote efficiency in business registration procedures and effective service delivery and to promote a holistic approach in the reform of business registration procedures and the adoption of innovative solutions. So um, holistic approach, ibig sabihin po, Hindi lamang po business permit and licensing office ang magre-re-engineer. Kasi po, kunyari po, magre-engineer ang BPLO pero hindi po nagre-engineer ang atin pong BFP. Sayang naman po yung pagre-re-engineer ng BPLO. May iiwan at may iiwan po ang BFP. So may mga steps pa rin po na madadagdag or may mga steps pa rin po na marireretain na pwede naman na pong na-integrate sana kung kasabay pong nag nag na re-engineer yung BFP or other and other um, offices po involved in the business permitting process natin. So legal basis, the local government code, Electronic Commerce Act of 2000, Data Privacy Act, the UDB law, 
DIRR of EOD below and yung atin pong previous DILG DTIJ MC 2016-01. So ano na nga po ba yung standards and guidelines natin? Una po sa number of forms dapat meron tayong unified application form na mention ko po kanina si E11032. Ito pong unified application form dapat merong unique identification number. So kung meron po tayong system, i-enter lang po natin yung identification number, lalabas na yung details ng ating client. So hindi na po tayo mahihirapan pa ulit kuhanin yung details mula sa kanya. It must be uh, posted online, available online or in the LGU website para hindi na po pupunta si client natin para kumuha lamang ng application form. At dapat po may hard copies din sa atin pong LGU. Or kapag po tayo nag-i-inspect, Uh, before the renewal period, pwede na rin po tayong mag-distribute ng mga unified application form natin para po ready na si client natin kapag nag-renew na po siya ng kanyang business permit. And the establishment of a data sharing mechanism para po uh, hindi na po um, katulad po na sinabi kanina, magiging redundant. Kunyari, sa so, kukuni natin yung details ni client sa application form natin. Ako po as BPLO, i-enter ko yung data niya sa system ko. Si BFP may sarili niyang system so i-enter ulit yung data niya. Um, kunyari yung barangay, i-enter din po yung data. So sayang po yung oras na ginugugol sa pag enter ng data. Pero kung may data sharing mechanism po, mababawasan na po yung, yung time na ginugugol only sa pag encode So, yun po yung sinasabi nating data sharing mechanism. Number of steps, gaya nga po nabanggit kanina kapag fully implemented, one step. Pero habang nagta-transition pa po sa full automation, four steps or less. Mas maganda po, lesser. Pero maximum na po yung four steps na pwedeng mag-set ng appointment, submission ng documents niya, pag-receive ng order of payment, at kaliwaan na pong payment and claim of permit. So, yun po yung ating um, four steps bago po tayo mag-implement ng full, fully in, uh, automated or full EBOS. And sa number of days, um, basis nga po nito ay 11.032, three days. Extended only once for the same number of days. Uh, dati po, with the 2016 JMC, ang renewal application dapat one day process na. At pag new application, two days process na. Baka po magtaka kayo, bakit naging three days? Ito nga po ay dahil sa EOD below. At dapat po, kaya sa three days, ang inspections ay nakokondak na po. Sa loob ng three working days pong isinet ng atin pong JMC at ng batas. And sa number of signatories po, maximum of three composed of officers directly supervising the office or department concerned, responsible for the permit or clearance. At atin din pong ina-advocate ang use of authenticated digital signatures or electronic signatures in the business permit through the PNP, PNPKI of the DICT. So bakit po natin ina-advocate din yung um, digital signatures? Para po maiwasan, kanyari, um, Kapag po wala yung paper may, hindi na po natitenga yung papel kasi may digital signature na po tayo. Para hindi na rin po naghihintay si client na na hinihintay yung paper man ng kanyang business permit. So ito po, summary lang po ng ating mga standards, number of forms, number of steps, number of days, and number of signatories. Ang atin pong standard documentary requirements ay nandoon po sa atin pong um, joint memorandum circular na akin din pong ipo-provide sa inyo. Ay, may require clearances, permits, authorizations, and certifications secured from national government agencies in compliance to certain laws. So pwede din pong uh, mag-require. Depende po sa mga uh, batas na nakapaloob po doon sa mga requirements natin. Example po sa DNR, ganyan. 
and barangay clearances related to business permit applications will be integrated and processed by the BPLO. So, ang BPLO po ang makikipag-coordinate sa atin pong mga punong barangay if ever may mag apply po sa atin ng business permit. Ayan. Ay, sorry po. Ano po bang kailangan na slide? Ito po ba? Okay lang po ba yung discussion? Inyo po bang ini-screenshot? Maglilipat na po ako ng slide. Okay lang po. Okay na po. Thanks. Ayan. So, necessary reforms. Alam naman po natin na meron dapat tayong business one-stop one shop or electronic business one-stop shop. So, ayan, sabi nga po dito, automate BPLS or set up an electronic e-boss, electronic boss, not later than June 17, 2021. That is three years after the effectivity of the law. So, if no e-boss, LG use, ay open po to use the IBPLS software. Kaya din po tayo siguro nandito ngayon. Dahil tayo yung mga non-IBPLS users pa at baka pong maging interesado tayo dun sa system na ino-offer sa atin ng DICT. And if no e-boss, LG use shall set up a physical business one-stop shop. So, ito naman po ay nabanggit na kanina ano, yung functionalities ng e-boss natin. So, hindi ko na po um, hindi ko na po ito i-discuss pa. Ayan, transition to e-boss. Ito po yung binanggit ko kanina. Habang nagta-transition po tayo sa e-boss, may mga alternative po tayo na pwede po electronic submission of application through email, fax, or SMS. Um, kunyari po ako si client, uh, mag email na lang po kay BPLO na gusto ko pong mag-apply ng business permit. I-email ko po sa kanya lahat ng requirements. Kapag okay na po si BPLO, Uh, i-email back sa akin yung tax bill of payment ko na pwede ko nang bayaran po sa LGU. Parang punta ko na lang po sa LGU kapag magbabayad ako at kapag kukuhanin ko na po yung business permit. Or kung tumatanggap naman po ng, ng digital payments, ay di ang punta ko na lang po sa LGU ay ang pagkuha ko po ng business permit. Ayan. So, yun po. Yan po, ito po yung mga pwede natin gawin kapag nagta-transition po tayo sa e-boss. And LGUs po may adopt such other measures and facilities to further improve the goal of transitioning into a fully automated system. So baka po may mga um, naisip pa po kayong strategies or practices habang nagta-transition po tayo sa e-boss. Pwedeng-pwede naman po iyon. Basta po um, compliant pa rin po tayo syempre sa Senate ng atin, sa standards po ng ating Joint Memorandum Circular and most importantly, sa standards set by by RA 1103 to our, our EODP po. At ito po ay complementary reforms. Yung inspections daw po dapat may notice sa sabihan po natin sa at, ang atin pong mga business Uh, owners. Kasi po baka mamaya pumunta tayo doon, wala naman po tayong makausap. Sayang lang din po yung point na natin. Uh, use of checklist kung ano po yung i-inspect natin para guided din po yung ating um, pagbaba sa atin pong LGUs. Inspections, inspection findings right after the actual site inspection ay maipahetid na po natin at sa atin pong client para ma-actionan din po agad nila. Provision of time to remedy or address any positive finding during inspection. Um, bibigyan po natin sila ng oras to address any findings na nakita po natin during our inspection. At dapat po, or sana po hanggat maaari, joint inspection po tayo. 
through our joint inspection teams para hindi naman po um, araw-araw na lang may kinakausap po si ating pong client or or baka naman po uh, iisa naman po yung goal at para hindi na rin po nasasayang yung oras both ng LGUs natin and ng clients po. Ayan, doon po nagtatapos yung atin pong standard. Ang pinakamahalaga lang naman po talaga dito nating malaman. Ano yung standards natin? Ito pong slide na ito. Ayan. Ayan. Sabi po dito, you can you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. Obsolete. Ayan. So, baka po lalo yung ano natin, barangay clearance integration, sabihin natin, ang hirap naman yan. Siyempre po, tuwing simula naman or sa umpisa talagang mahirap. Ito nga po yung tinatawag nating mga birth pain. Sabi, uh, siguro iniisip din natin ng 2016 nung nilabas yung JMC na sinasabi, one day na lang yung processing for new applications ay for new renewal applications, two days for new application. Sabi po natin siguro mahirap. Pero I'm sure nagawa naman po natin. So ganun din po siguro ngayon. Ngayon, dahil una pa lang mahirap talaga, pero pag nakasanayan na natin, yun na po yung magiging standard practice din po natin sa ating LG. Yun na parang kahit nakapikit, kayang-kaya na po natin gawin. And soon din kung ano po yun nasa batas and kung ano po yun nasa JMC natin. So, um, kami naman po sa DILG, um, kasama po ang DILG din po ng Mimaropa, I'm sure, very willing po kami to provide um, assistance po sa atin po mga local government units. Kung kailangan nyo po ng, ng assistance, ay wag po kayong mahiyang um, lumapit kasi po um, yun naman po yung trabaho namin sa DILG to provide technical assistance to guide our um, local government units. So, yun lamang po sa akin pong discussion. Meron po ba kayong questions and clarifications? I will be sharing with you po a copy of my slides through the ICT para mai um, ma-share po sa inyo. Ganon din po yung copy po ng ating um, EOD below and yung atin pong implementing rules and um, regulations po. So, any questions po or clarifications? Pasensya na po kayo at mabilis po ang mag <laughs> yes po, good afternoon ma'am. I think meron pong question no from Ibaan Batangas and this time we need some clarification. Kung okay lang po ba mag-open ng microphone ang ating uh, participant from uh, Ibaan Batangas, can you elaborate more po itong question na ano po ang pwede niyong suggest regarding sa problem namin sa BF so that our DILG or uh, partner agencies no can Uh, answer po your question. Um, hello po. Yes po ma'am. Hello po. Good afternoon po. Good afternoon po sa inyo. Siguro po mas magaling na ang mag-elaborate yung aming municipal treasurer si Ma'am Marley kasi sila po nagkakaproblema regarding doon sa sa collection kung paano i-transfer doon sa taga Bureau of Art. Kasi ang alam ko ang gusto ng taga BFP ay mabilis, mabilisan po. So, hindi po kaya sa treasurer's office namin pagkakanyas ko kulang sa tao or masyado po kasi mabusisi yung proseso. So, siguro po si Ma'am Marley na lang po yung aming treasurer's office. Ah, uh, treasurer. Opo, oh yung aming treasurer na lang po. Okay po. Uh, I think Ma'am Marley is on, also on board po, no? Ma'am Marley, can you elaborate? Hello, good afternoon po. Good afternoon po. Uh, sorry kasi po sa integration no, sa collection ng sa... BLP, FC. Yun po ang problema namin kasi po ang nire-require daw po kasi ang BFP na uh, after one day daily ba ang remittance sa kanila? One day or two days ay may remit na agad sa kanila ang collection. Doon po kami mahihirapan dahil para naman po uh, kulang po kami sa tao ay 
to do mat trabaho po yun. Kaya hindi po namin kaya yung ganun. At kahit mo lang sana po one month, sana. Kasi kasi hindi daw po payag ang ano. Hello po ma'am, good afternoon. Um, I think um, i- I-check ko po kung ilang days po yung sa remittance nung sa BFP. Pero ang um, kumalala niyo po kanina sa discussion, di ba parang pinayagan na po yung BFP to enter into a memorandum of agreement. Ang um, pakiusap lang po talaga ng BFP, wag pong baguhin yung provisions ng nasa MOA nila. Kung baga ang babaguhin lang po or ang itadaglag lang po talaga yung name ng ating local chief executive and yung LGU po natin. Pero Ayan, sa BFPMC daw po, two days po ang remittance. So kung ang request po natin ay mas pahabayan or mas palawigin po yung remittance, atin pong itong ilalobby sa atin pong um, central office para po yung central office na po ang makipag-usap sa national headquarters ng BFP. Kasi po, ang naglabas po ng, ng MC na ito at yung provisions po kung ano po yung nasa MOA natin or yung nasa MOA nila, ay from the national headquarters. So kung may revision po, ay sa national headquarters po ng BFP natin ilalapit. Kasi hindi naman, hindi ko po kasi masasagot yung kung pwede or hindi. Kasi sa BFP po kasi iyon. Pero sa akin po, ilalabi ko po ito or akin po i-inform. Yung, i-inform ko po yung central office natin sa regarding po sa concern natin. Okay po. Thank you, you Ma'am Monet, for the uh, answer po. And Ma'am Merli, okay na po ba? I think also, no, Sir Leo have mentioned some additional information. Yung uh, we can base the po on the BFP MC 2020. And the file has been shared na po via um, chat box. So you can also uh, get a copy for your reference po. Ayan po. So aside from ibaan, meron po ba tayong question habang nandito pa po ang ating partners from BFP? Uh, I'm sorry, TILG po. Habang wala pa pong question, I have shared yung uh, you, presentation materials ko po sa chat box. But um, kasama po dito yung IRR and copy of the law. Okay po. Uh, may question po, privately sent po, no? Ask ko lang din po sana kung okay lang na one or two months ang validity ng permit na i-issue through online application. Kasi we need to check pa po kung tama ang mga requirements at declared na gross ng client. So, ang question po, I think, ma'am, is kung okay lang daw po ba? na one or two months ang validity ng i-issue permit through online application. Kasi i-validate pa daw po kung um, tama ang requirements at yung declared na gross income ng client. So, is it applicable po ba, ma'am? I think nabanggit po ito ng anti-red tape authority natin in one of our activities. Um, Sir um, Robban, Yes. Yan. If ever po, um, you may correct me if I'm wrong po. Um, atin pong business permit, dahil ito naman po ay tayo ang nag-issue, pwede po siyang revocable. So, um, ang banggit nga po sa amin nun, there is no such thing as temporary business permit. Kasi business permit in nature, pwede po siyang ma-revoke. Lalo po kung may mga uh, paglabag. So, siguro po, um, wag na lang po nating lagyan ng validity. Ang ilagay na lang po natin ay pwede siyang ma-revoke. Sakali pong may mga paglabag tayong makita. And kung hindi pa naman po natin thoroughly na-validate yung mga documents, mas mainam na po siguro na wag na muna po natin siyang issue ng business permit. Pero let us be guided pa rin with the number of processing time o yung standard processing time po natin. So, yun lang mang po. Thank you, Ma'am Monet. I think that is clear po. That question po is from Ibaan, Batangas. So, I hope na ponder po no, ang kanilang question. So, last call po for the question. 
habang andito po ang ating DLG partner. Ayan po. So, I think, sabi nga ni ma'am, seeing none. <laughs> so, wala po atang. So, far questions. But can we confirm if our participants already understood no yung mga uh, discussion ng ating DILG? Also, no, aside from ARTA, very vital din yung diniscuss po no, ng ating uh, DILG partner no? because this is the highlights of the EOD below. And also some joint memorandum circulars. So it has been also emphasized. So can you type number one? Yeah, nauna na po si San Fernando Romblon. Kung na, ayan. So it seems na very uh, well discussed po no, ng ating ARTA and DILG, yung mga guidelines and policies under the EOD below and in relation to the automation of the business permit process. So thank you very much po, ma'am, Munet. So for us to award you a certificate, permission po, ma'am, to uh, return the host access po. Ayan. Thank you very much po. Okay, thank you, ma'am. So let me share po this certificate of appreciation. To Ms. Monette Landicho of the Department of Interior and Local Government Calabarzon Region for her invaluable insights shared as a resource speaker during the Integrated Business Permit and Licensing System, IBPLS webinar, with the theme Automation of Business Application Process. Of the Department of Information and Communications Technology, Calabarzon and Nimaropa Region, held today, June 26, 2023, via Zoom platform. And this is to be signed by our regional director. So uh, may we uh, have a photo opportunity po this time with our DILG speaker. So can our participants open their cameras po? Ayan. Para po uh, magkaroon tayo ng picture no, with our DILG partner. <laughs> Okay, so ayan po, again, uh, at a count of three, two pages po tayo. One, two, three, smile po. Okay, sa so second page po tayo. One, two, three, smile. Okay, thank you very much po again, Ms. Monet Landicho from uh, DILG Calabar Zone for sharing po a discussion in relation to the guidelines and policies of the automation of business permit process. So with that po, po. Okay ma'am, thank you po. So with that po, uh, we will be again uh proceeding on the energizer. So before we proceed on our last speaker from the DICT for us to showcase our system offered for free which is the IBPLS. So let us have first an energizer. So I will be sharing po uh a game in which uh, you will be accessing the link ayan po and the code so um before we proceed ilalagay ko po yung code sa ating chat box ayan so ito po yung uh, website na inyo pong um i-access for a while po uh, i-copy ko lang po yung link sa chat box and then, yung code po na ilalagay nyo is yung nakikita nyo po sa screen. Yan. So, with that po, uh, aantayin po natin for 3 minutes yung mga participants. So, ang man, uh, the DICT will be giving also no uh, token for those who will be the top 2 of this quiz. So, you may first click the link sent to your chat box and then type the code. Okay. Ayan. So as you can see, nakikita na po natin yung mga participants. And yung mga nasa uh, Zoom Live uh, and also sa Facebook Live, rather po, no? So you can also join. So access the link and also you may type the code. So in 3 minutes, siguro at uh, 2.59, no? we will be starting the quiz proper. And whoever got the top two highest score, so that will be our winner for this energizer. Ayan. So wait lang po tayo, no? Another two minutes until 2.59. 
habang nagjo-join pa po ang iba. So we already have 30 na on board. 31. So at 2.59, we will start po, no, our energizer. Yan. So yung top to po, no, makakatanggap ng items from the DIC. Okay, so we have 35 already. Yan, may mga umahabol pa. So when I click start po, no, you may now start answering. And then uh, whichever got the highest, so that will be our winner. No, top to po, ang kukunin natin. Okay, two minutes left no, before 2.59. So we have 38 on board. iPhone 14 daw po ba yan? <laughs> Pwede po yung case. Ano? Pwede pong case. Okay, so last call po for the attendees. Okay, so let's count down po, no? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So let's start the quiz po and you may answer it po, no? By your own. So hopefully marami pong mataas ang makuha. So this exam or quiz will be focusing on the terms and questions about the IBPLS for us to check no, your familiarization. So let me start. Ayan. So you may answer no, after the countdown. So it's a check po natin. So dito po natin makikita yung top 5 but we will be getting the top
first place. Sino po itong 494632? So, can you comment po on the chat box? Ayan. So, congratulations po kay Mr. Kim. He got the perfect answer. Ah, si Miss Cindy po. Um, po. So, sige po. Congratulations po Mr. Kim Faderon and Miss Cindy Montalbo. So, please uh, give us na lang no, directly via direct message your name and LGU. for us to give you no and deliver to you the items based on your uh, reward. So Miss Cindy is our second place and Sir Kim is our first place. Wow, si Mr. Kim Faderon. Congratulations po. So it seems na meron talagang mga uh, participants na natin even though they are not yet adapting no the IBPLS but then they are very familiar and uh it shows their interest po no, to adapt. So, thank you and we appreciate that po. Okay, so congratulations again, Mr. Kim Faderon and Miss Cindy Montalbo from LG Lopez and LGU Ojongan Romulon. So, at this juncture po, uh, we will be proceeding on the um, next speaker po natin. But before we proceed, we would like to remind everyone to please fill up their attendance. Yan po. As you can see on your screen, you can scan or you may uh, fill it up through chat box. So the link will be sent to you on the chat box po. So yun po ang ating attendance. So this attendance po will be our basis no, for us to give you a certificate of attendance. Kaya uh, make sure lang po no, that you have written correctly your um. Names. Kasi minsan nagtatypo tayo, so mali po yung napiprint nating certificate. So make sure po na correctly encoded ang ating names. Yes po. Uh, so one lang naman po ang attendance, sir. No? Sir Jason. So once you have filled up, so hindi po we will disregard na lang the multiple entry. So we will count it as one. So wow, we are now 100 po no? in the Zoom. So again, uh, thank you po for coming. So to mention some, no, I think meron tayong participant na dumating from uh, LGU or Calapan City. No? So we have from Calapan and also yung from Sablayan. Meron po tayong dumating. And also L, uh, LGU Santa Maria, Coron. Yan. So marami pong uh, dumating. No? So thank you po again for coming. So with that po, uh, to... Uh, introduce our third and the last speaker before we proceed on the sharing of the best practices. So allow me to introduce to you our third speaker to discuss the IBPLS features, including the automation of the business permit and licensing system using the DICT's IBPLS, Mr. Leo Di Paglikawan, our information systems analyst, one of the DICT calibers, Sir Leo. Hello po, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Ako po ba inyong naririnig? So, po. so uh, ngayon po, uh, I will be discussing po the EBPLS system uh, na dinevelop po ni DICT on how this could help your LGU automate and digitalize your business permit process. So, let me just uh, share my screen lang po. Ay, 
Ayan. Sige po. Okay. So, for my discussion po, uh, I'll give you a brief overview po on how the system, the EBPLS system works. And then, if there would be time po, I would be discussing po the modules and the different parts of the system po. Okay. So... Ayan. So for our EBPL system, ito po yung process flow niya. So the applicant or the business owner um, has two options. They could go ahead and go to the LGU, the BPLO office, to apply for a renewal or to apply for a business permit in the um, manually. Pero yung pag-apply, uh, hanggang doon na lang po yung um, manual. Um, the second option of the client po is to register in the LGU's website, EBPLS instance. And then once registered, um, they could now apply for a renewal or a new business permit um, application through the system. Um, they will be needing to upload the requirements and um, they need to sub, uh, monitor their application. They can um, also, the, the tax order of payment po, once it is uh, assessed by the Treasury Office or by the BPLO Office, masasend din po ito sa um, account po ni applicant on the system and also to the email address used. So once the applicant po has been, uh, or the application has been encoded in our EBPLS system, the application will now go to the BPLO head account for verification and review of the application. So on this part, makikita po kung online applicant po siya, makikita po ni BPLO yung uploaded requirements and the accomplished unified application form. If ever po na yung applicant is uh, walk-in into the LGU, then the BPLO will have hard copies of the submitted requirements and uh, they could review. Now, once the BPLO deemed and uh, sees that the application is sufficient with complete documents, the application will now be verified or marked by BPLO as verified. It will now go, after that, it will now go to the different endorsing offices. So the endorsing offices, po, this varies from LGU to LGU. So, nandiyan si Sanitary Office, si BFP, si OBO, um, si Health. Ayan. So, in the, the endorsing offices po in the EBPLS system will have their own accounts. And um, lahat po ng applications after verification ay dadaan po sa mga endorsing offices. So, the case po with the endorsing offices, let's say you have four endorsing offices. Once... Uh, may isa po dito sa endorsing offices na hindi or nag uh, mark as incomplete or nag decline hindi na po magpupush through ang application ni client into assessment so the endorsing offices po needed a collective um, endorsement of an application for a certain application to go to the automatic assessment of fees so once Yung mga endorsing offices po is um, nag-mark as complete na lahat or nag-endorse na, the application will now be automatically assessed by the system depending on how your LGU set up your fees, your formulas, your computation in the system. So there are two choices po in the system kung sino pong hahawak ng assessment. It could be the treasurer, uh, treasury office, or the BPLO office, depending po sa inyong LGU kung saan po ba nangyayari ang assessment. Now, the treasury office or the BPLO office po will check the, automa uh, the automated assessment kung tama or kung may nawawalang fees or may sobra ba. Now, if it's okay po, uh, magkiklik lang po sila ng finalized assessment. And once naklik po yung finalized assessment, the system po will automatically send an online or an, a copy of the finalized assessment to the client's email address, whether it is uh, an online applicant 
or a walk-in applicant. So once that has been done po, um, the next po will be payment. So in the payment po, uh, the EBPLS system po is ready for integration of online payment. So once po na nagbayad, whether online or walk-in po sa treasury office to pay, um, ipaprocess din po in the system. Once processed in the system, uh, na-issuehan po ng OR, the next po would be the issuance. For the issuance po, kung walk-in si client, syempre po, um, ipiprint po yung issued business permit and ipoprovide po kay client. Pero kapag po ito is uh, online or online applicant, um, once po issued by the BPLO office, automatically po is it magsisend po ng copy nito si system sa account po ni applicant. Ayan. So, for the purpose po na ipakita ko po sa inyo yung step-by-step -step process. So, ito po, once you have the EBPLS system, ito po yung login page ninyo. So, the login page po, dito rin po ang makikita ng login page whether you are uh, an LGU um, employee involved in the BPLS process or you are an online applicant. Uh, Magkakaiba-iba na lang po ito on user access level. So, login po dito. And um, kapag ka po online applicant, i-click lang po itong register now para po maka-create kayo ng account. And once you click it, lalabas po ito. Um, kukuha lang po ng few details si system or sa inyo na kailangan nyo pong sagutan. And then once you accept the terms and conditions, lalabas po ito. Confirm your registration. So what happens in here po is that the system automatically sends po a confirmation link sa email address po ni client. Ayun po, um, hindi po tayo pwedeng maging uh, online applicant kapag wala po tayong working email address. Ayan. So, mag access po si client sa kanyang email address. I-click niya po yung confirmation link or email sent by the system. And once done, ito na po yung kanyang account. Pwede na po siyang mag-login into his or her created applicant account. So, pwede na po siyang mag-apply. Ito naman po is the homepage of the BPLO. So, if you are going to see po, madami po tayong icons in here and marami pong tabs. Um, the heart and soul po of the BPLS process is the, syempre po the BPLO account. So, dan dito po lahat ang ating mga reporting. So, the good thing about the, BPA, the EBPLS po is that there is a, a link po in here or a uh, report generation in here po which is called the National Agency Reports. So, ito po, yung po mga hinihingi sa inyong report ni DILG, ni BIR, ni PSA, kinukulate po ni system yung records from the business owners and um, siya po yung nagagawa ng reports. So what you just need to do kapag ka po oras na to submit those reports, uh, you just need to click on it, on that uh, certain report, um, and then ano po, uh, search kung anong start date and end date nung gusto nyong ma-generate na report, and then download it. Once you download it, uh, the file po will be an Excel file, and you could go ahead now and submit it to the national agencies. So, financial reports po will also be available in here and other, others pa po. Also po, dito rin po siniset up yung ating system kay BPLO head account. So, ito naman po yung pong in-house or the in-house um, unified application form and um, whether the client is a walk-in applicant na i-encode po ng BPLO staff or an online applicant naman po na mag apply ng kanya po, whether it's a new business or a renewal of business, ganito pa rin po yung makikita. So, 
Kapag ka po ang application type is renewal and you click on renewal, meron po madadagdag dito na um, link wherein you could search existing data ni client. Ayan po. So, for example, an LGU has been utilizing the system for, let's say, two years, 2022 and 2023. Comes 2024 po at nag-renew um, po ulit si client. Pwede na pong i-search niyo yung kanyang existing business or existing data in the system. And um, majority po ng ating unified application form will be automatically um inputed data by the system. Kukuhanin po ni, ni system yung data from the free views and then ilalagay po dito. Like first name, last name, middle name, birthday, uh, house number. And even though po na pinulap nyo yung data from previous date, uh, from previous application, pwede nyo pa rin po itong i-edit in the case na meron pong kailangan palita. So part one po would be the taxpayer information. And then, part two po would be all about the business information. So, itatanong po dito yung business name. If there is a trade name or franchise name, tatanong din po. Um, DTI is XCDA registration. DTI is XCDA uh, date of registration. Uh, T number and um, madami pa po. The third part po is the business activity and requirements. So, dito po, dito po iladaglagay yung line of business ni client. So currently po, the EBPLS system is using PSA's 2019 fourth quarter updates for the PSIC po. So kumpleto po tayo. Um, we are updated po on to the latest uh, PSA release po ng PSIC. And dito rin po, nalalagay yung kanyang capital investment, which is new business, gross sales, um, essential and non-essential. On the other part po, this is where um, the requirements po will show. Um, now, in the case po that your LG you wanted to do full electronic and you wanted uh, wala ng paper trail, kahit po si client is mag-submit ng requirements or mag-walk in, mag-walk in, mag-submit ng requirements, um, hard copies, what you could what the LG you could do is uh, you could scan it and upload it po para po um nakatouch po siya sa application and uh, part 4 po would be the summary so in the summary papakita po sa inyo yung electronic format o ng unified application form and once you click submit Automatic na po siya, submitted, and will now go to the verification of the BPLO. So, ano po bang nakikita ni BPLO kapag ka mag-verify na ng application? So, ito po ang nakikita ni BPLO. Copy or electronic format po ng kanyang unified application form and the requirements submitted by the client. Ito po, kaya po siya is may check. Ibig sabihin po, electronically uploaded po yung requirement. And um, for, for the BPLO po to counter check kung tama ba yung in-upload, kiniklik lang po ito, the arrow down button, and what the system will do is the system will uh, create a new tab and ipapakita po sa inyo yung uploaded document. And once the BPLO po has deemed that the application is all good for renewal of business or new business application, i-verify lang po. Once verified, the application will now go to the different endorsement offices po. So in the endorsement naman po, kanya-kanya pong accounts ito. Building, health, fire, and ganito po ang itsura ng kanilang account. So again, the endorsing offices po will see the unified application form. They will also see the submitted requirements and in the case po na ang isang LG, ang isang endorsing offices rather, is meron pong ini-issue na document as part of their requirement, 
um, dito naman po siya lalabas. So, they could um, create a online or a electronic version of that document and they could upload it po. And once the application po has been okay or okay kay endorsing office, mark lang po as complete. Um, in the endorsing offices po, kung ang isang client po sa inyo is may problema, in the EBPL system po, wag nyo lang pong hahayaan siya na wala kayong action. Um, because the system po, the EBPL system has a counter. So basically, kapag hindi nyo po minark as complete, ay hindi po kayo nagmark as complete or hindi po kayo nag-decline ng isang application, dire-direcho po ang counter ng isang application. So what you need to do kung may problem po ito sa isang in, uh, endorsing office, i-decline nyo lang po for the counter to stop. Ayan. So once mark as complete, na mark na po lahat ng endorsing offices as complete, the application will now go to an automatic assessment. So ibubuksan nyo na lang po ito and the system will show you the payments po. The amounts of this po, the computation for this po, all depends po on the setup of fees, formulas, ranges, and um, setup of fees that your LGU has inputted into the system. So um, also, let's say, um, ang unang payment mode ni client, let's say po itong transaction is new, renewal. Ayan, sorry. And annual lang kanyang unang piniling payment mode. But on assessment, sabi ni client, ay hindi pala, hindi ko pala kayang bayadan ng isang bayadan yung amount. Magkano ba bayadan ko if ever mag ano ko? Um, quarterly. So, in, in the manual process po, uh, magre-recompute kayo or magma-manual computation kayo para mabigyan nyo ng information si client. In the system po, in the EBPL system, dito lang po, uh, i-click nyo lang si payment mode and kapag click nyo po ng payment mode, um, pwede nyo na pong piliin semi-annual or quarterly. Uh, if you click on quarterly, the system will reassess and it will show you the payment schedules and amounts dito po sa part na to, sa babang ito. Ayan. And kapag okay na po ang assessment, magpa-finalize na lang po ng assessment, i-click lang po dito, finalize assessment, and once finalized, the system po automatically sends copy of that finalized assessment to the client's email address. Another scenario is upon assessment, let's say, meron pong um, nakita kayo na maling fee or may kulang na fee. So what will happen is that your administrator or BPLO or treasury will have to make adjustments on computations. And then kapag okay na po yung adjustments na ginawa, you just need to click reassess and the system po will recompute again. So once okay na, finalize po again. And once finalized, ito naman po yung itsura ng tax order of payment. So this is printable for the sake po ng mga walk-in applicants. You could provide this po. And then this tax order of payment po kasi, this will, the, for walk-in, kailangan nyo po itong iprint at bigyan siya ng kopya. Since ito po nagbibase si BFP ng kanilang um, FSIC fees, FSEC fees, or the 15% po nila. And then payment. So payment na po. Um, on the payment po, like what I've said earlier po, the EBPL system or IBPL system po is ready to cater online payments po. So the LGU po just need to have um, noti or need to notify po your depository bank. Um, for, now, for now po, ang readily available po with the ICT for online payment is DBP and LAT Bank. If your LGU po 
opted to go to or meron po kayong depository ay bank na ibang banko po, pwede pa rin naman po ito. It would just take longer po. Um, yan. So if DBP po ay land bank, mabilis lang po ito. You just need to notify your depository bank. They will send you um, documents po that you need to answer. And then once you answered it, um, doon na po magsa-start yung integration natin. So there are two types po of online payment. The one is the integrated, wherein the whole um, land bank EBS portal will be migrated into your IBPLS instance. The other one po is standalone. Uh, meaning standalone, your LGU po will only be listed on the EBS portal of land bank or DBP. And once po na magbabayad na, and ito po pala, for online payment po, for land bank po, kasama po debit card, bank net, GCash, and uh, 7-Eleven po is covered also by land bank kapag ka po integrated. So ito po yung itsura ng e-payment portal kapag online payment. Ito naman po kay DBP. Um, once po na nagbayad si client, uh, the good thing about integrated online payment po, automatic din po ang um, checking po nito. So let's say the client paid online uh, this, uh, and uh, the system po, kasi um, interconnected po ang system ni Land Bank and ni DICT kapag ka po integrated. Kapag ganun po, nagbayad, nakita po ni EBS Portal na okay na yung bayad, magsisend po siya ng notification to the IBPLS system. And once the IBPLS system po receive that uh, information, automatically po the system will tag the application as paid. So once the payment po has been done, issue na lang po tayo ng official receipt or EOR. So the EOR po, this has been mandated po by COA that uh, all online payment po should have a counter EOR. Ayan. And once uh, official receipt po has been processed and um, printed out for the client, pupunta na po tayo sa issue once. So BPLO account po will have to issue the business permit. So the permit number po, this is being generated by the system together with the business ID number or BIN number. Balikan ko lang po yung kaninang question ni Ibaan. In the IBPLS system po kasi, you could input remarks or notes on your issued business permit. Like what um, Mamunet have said earlier po, rec uh, revocable po kasi ang business permit. So anytime po, pwede po itong i-revoke ng LGU. So in the case po, let's say, ang scenario natin is that ang isang... Client po is binibigyan ng business permit temporarily uh, since meron siyang needed to be submitted requirement from a national agency in the span of 30 to 60 days. So pwede pong ilagay yung remarks na yun dito. And once you save your remarks, malalagay po siya on the issued business permit. Ayan. And um, once po, let's say 30, 60 days has passed, hindi po nag-comply uh, si client. Uh, babalikan nyo lang po ito sa issue ones and you could revoke the issued business permit. Ayan po. So this is the generated um, documents by the system. Business permit, um, OR, tax order of payment. Ayan. Um, also po, um, the system po is ready to cater barangay clearance. So... For barangay clearance po, anytime po is pwede pong tayong mag, if you're using BPLS po, IBPLS, um, the system po we can cater your barangays po. And um, kung iba-iba po ang barangay fees ninyo, the system is uh, able to do, um, do that for you po. Another thing po with the uh, IBPLS system is the integration of the working permit or the occupational permit. So if your LGU po, 
has occupational permit, so missing LK in ito, um, ready po to integrate that module into your IBPLS system. So, for my presentation po, ayun lang po, uh, mabilis lang po yung presentation ko as to show you kung ano po ba yung IBPLS system. Um, if your LGU po wanted to avail the IBPLS system, um, the IBPLS system po is free. Libre po ito, wala po itong bayad. Um, the trainings po are free and as long as you are using po the IBPLS system, the ICT personnel po will be able to provide you with technical support. Kahit po Sabado, nagbibigay po kami ng tech support pag meron po kayong uh, mga questions. Together with e-payment, barangay po. Ayan. Um, the process po with this is that, um, syempre, if you're if you have if you want to avail the IBPLS system, syempre po um, letter of intent po addressed to our regional director Cheryl C. Ortega, and then after that po, we'll notify you po on documents needed to be submitted, and um, after that will do po a e-readiness validation. So the e-readiness validation po, pupunta po kami sa inyong LGU to check on the LGU's capacity or readiness in going digital. So ayun po. And then after po noon, okay na po lahat. Um, MOA executed, SB resolution released. Um, we'll go into training. The training po is a four, uh, four days training po ito. And then after the training of four days, the LGU po is being given one month or one and a half months po in other cases to fully build up their system. Siyempre po with the assistance of the ICT. And once um, nag-notify na po or nag-signify na po si LGU na tapos na ang inyong build up of your system, we'll go into a two-day system testing just to make sure po that everything has been set up correctly and if ever there are adjustments needed to be done, we are going to do that po on the system testing. Ayan po. If okay po ito, okay na po sa inyo, then uh, papapasado po kayo with the system testing, we'll go po into a launching. So once po that the business permit po system has already been operation, uh, is being operated po in your LGU, operational na siya, that's the time po that we could go ahead and do another system. Um, the ICT po has another system. This is the building permit and certificate of occupancy system. So that's another system po that we would be able to provide your LGU for free. Ayan po. So details po of this, magsisend po kami sa chat box maya maya ng konti. Ayan. Sir Red. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for sharing your insights, sir. No, uh, it is indeed very uh, well elaborated, po. So that's how the DICT's IBPLS works. And hopefully, uh, by attending and listening, especially sa ating mga non-user cities, may mga cities po tayo, no, na wala pa pong uh, system on that and municipalities po na nandito. So please uh, send to us your letter of intent, as mentioned by Sir Leo to uh, address to our regional director, uh, Director Cheryl C. Ortega. So for Region 4A, you may send it via email po. Yung ating letter of intent, no, uh, usually uh, it can be your own format showing to us na you are interested to automate your business permit. And also, um, we will be sending our emails po through chat box for your information po and guidance. For us also to uh, reach you out no every time na kayo po ay magkaroon ng query in the adoption. So later on, we will be sharing po our emails for R4A and r 4 Okay, so thank you very much again, Sir Leo. So this time, uh, may I request, Sir, to return the host access for me to present po the Certificate of Appreciation. Sir Ed, may mga questions yes. lang. Sagutin ko lang itong ah, yes po. Yes, Sir. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so... Questions po, from Sam Fernando Romblon po, kung meron daw po ba tayong uh, video tutorial? So, yes po, 
meron po. So, katatapos lang po. Meron po akong mga video tutorials. Kaso wala pong boses. Ano lang po, papanoodin nyo lang po ito on certain um, areas po kung saan kayo nahihirapan. We'll be, uh, I'll be sending po, um, isend ko po sa inyong ISA, which is uh, si Mamuena, yung Google uh, Drive link po nun para po ma-access uh, nyo po. So, these tutorial videos po, maliliit lang po ito. Uh, it will cater po on setting up your system correctly. From Binangonan, um, sir, ano po yung real-time? Ano pong real-time yung tinatanong niyo, sir? Good PM po. Paano po kung walang available bank sa area? So, bank po sa area. Um, paano po ba ito, sir, ma'am? <laughs> hindi ko po mag medyo hindi ko po maintindihan yung inyo pong questions. Kindly elaborate lang po on the chat box po para mabigyan ko po kayo ng answer. For LGU Gasan Marinduque, yes po, definitely po. Um, the Sir Ed po and the whole 4B Mimaropa team po will be connecting with you po to further po itong ating pag-avail ng IBPLA system. From Iban, Batangas po, Sir, sa DICT na system po siguro, iba po kasi ang gumawa ng system namin. Ipapa-alter na lang po namin sa kanila para may approval muna sa office namin before. Um, yes, ma'am. Um, that is the discretion po of your LG. The ICT. Okay po. Send po ako ng copy ng presentation ko po dito. Ayan po. Payment po. Yes po, sir. Real time po ang posting ng payment. Ah, para sa e-payment. Um, for example po, ma'am, your depository bank is on another LGU. So, ang magiging mahirap na lang po kasi dito, or ang initial po na nagagawin natin is that you're needing to uh, contact that depository bank from the located on other LGUs po. And then, we'll communicate po with them. Um, they will be giving you a few documents po needed to be accomplished and then you need to submit it. Kapag po nakasubmit na doon, um, the ICT po together with the LGU and um, your depository bank po will have its own um, chat box po or chat group wherein lahat po ng um, inquiries, um, technical support when it comes to e-payment will be provided on that. So, ayun po. Isa pa sir, pwede po ba na add ng delete option para di na po kami mag-clear. Nagkamali kami ng inputs kung pwede lang po. Um, for this po, um, pwede po namin ito. For now po kasi, sir, wala po talagang delete button sa IBPLA system. So, ang meron lang po is in, tag as inactive. Um, but we are going to have to request this po to our developers po. They will be needing to study this po. And um, maybe next update po is magkaroon na po. Hindi ko lang po masabi sa inyo kung ma papagbigyan or hindi po. Ayan po. Sige po. Um, any more questions po? Ayan po, sir. I think um, my question po dito, sir, no, privately sent. Sir, hmm. what is the counterpart of our LGU once our letter of intent is being approved? So I think, sir, Leo, no, uh, they, they are pertaining pag nakapag-submit na po sila ng LOI sa DICT. Okay po. So once po that uh, your LOI po has been received by DICT po, we'll be sending po um, two, three um, documents po that you need to answer. Including on that three documents po is what we call the e-readiness survey. So once we receive po your answered um, documents will set po a visitation into your LGU. Um, this is to make sure po that the LGU po is ready and uh, capable po to implement the IBPLA system. In the case po na meron pong mga questionable areas on the implementation, um, again, 
um, the ICT po uh, can find or can provide solutions po. Ayan. Can po ah. Can. <laughs> Pero um, those po, those um, other assistance po, siguro po Gal, it will be coming from other projects po. Depende po sa usapan natin or sa atin po magiging plan on how you could um, eventually um, implement the system properly and correctly po. And then after po nun, um, MOA between the ICT and LGU, um, SB resolution also po is needed. And after that po, um, training na po tayo. Right. Okay, thank you sir. I think may additional question po. No? Possible po ba ang customization sa IBPLS? Um, um, customization po as to paano po ba paano po bang customization now um, the, the the ICT system po kasi the IBPLS system po is not um developed or not to cater one LGU only um this system po is a product po of a study from all of the LGU that the that the Pilip, uh, Philippines po has so we just uh, ang ginawa po kumuha po kami noong mga pare-parehas na proseso ng mga LGU and yun po yung nasa system. Um, it also, kaya po ganito ang system natin, is to follow po the RA11032 which main goal po is to streamline the process of business permitting on all cities and municipalities. So on that note po, if we have one system to be used by all, uh, by all of the LGUs po, yung pong proseso kay Batangas City would be the same process kapag mag apply ka ng business permit, let's say kay Naik, kay Quezon, kay Imus, kay Pila, or kahit saan man pong LGU, parehas po ang proseso. Ayan po. Ayun, sir. I think may additional question po, sir. Uh, from PPC, pwede po ba mag-customize or mag-filter ng reports? Kasi may mga humihingi ng mga data like academe and other business establishment para po ma-filter yung data na pwede lang i-share? Um, yes, sir. Um, once you downloaded the, the reports po, um, yung pong downloaded file po ang pwede ninyo pong ma-filter. For example po, uh, discount on penalties. Okay, so for penalties po, the system automatically um, adjust the payments po depending on your set interest and surcharge. For discount po, um, pwede po, there is a workaround po on discount in the system. So yun po, pwede po ito. Kung ito po ang tanong niyo, Sir Jerwin, discounts, there is a workaround po on the system for this po. Ayun po. Parang meron pa po. Ayan. Ayun, sir. Uh, so far po, no, upon checking, uh, meron pa po ba tayong questions sa ating resource speaker? Ayan, sa ating mga LGUs po. Do you have any more questions about the DICT's IBPLS? So, sir, may tanong po si Binangonan. Oh, okay po. Si uh, set up po ba on premise po ba or cloud-based? Cloud-based po. Um, I forgot to mention po the system po is a cloud-based system po. Our um, cloud provider po is Microsoft Azure. So for sa laki naman po ng cloud, what we have po right now is 40 pentabyte. So basically, malaki po ang ating cloud. Hindi po kaya natin punuin ito in our lifetime. And uh, kaya po din kasi cloud-based si system is para po accessible siya on our constituents, on our clients, kahit nasan po sila, basta may internet po sila. Ayan. Okay, thank you, Sir Leo. Uh, do we have any more questions pa po? Okay, I think may additional, Sir Leo, si Binangonan. Ay, sige po. Wait lang po. Ayan. Copy. Ah, no, Sir. 
mirror copy of your uh, or server sir hindi po but if you want to have access po uh, on the, uh, on certain backup backup po on your system po of your database um we could make arrangements po on that Okay, thank you, sir. I think, uh, Binungana, do we have any more additional questions po? Ayan. So, sa live po, no, let me check kung meron po tayong questions. So far po, ay, ayan po. Wala po, no, wala po tayong questions sa live. Ayan. So, um, thank you po, Binangonan LGU, uh, Mr. Jerwin Valdez, no, for raising questions. Sa ating pong other LGUs, do we have more questions so that we can proceed on the next phase of the event? So, can we type number one again? If the discussion of Sir Leo is, loud, uh, is clear and uh, understandable on your end, Okay, so I'm receiving a lot of ones. Yeah, so it shows na clearly emphasized po no, ni Sir Leo ang DICTs, IBPLS. Okay, thank you po for the response. So this time, uh, I think those who have still questions, no, you can drop the questions on the chat box and later on siguro babasahin po natin if we still have time. So for the meantime, uh, we will be now calling no, LGUs as um, after we award the certificate to Sir Leo. So, ayun sir, makikibalik po ng host access. Okay, thank you. So, ayun po, ano, uh, binigay na po ni Sir Leo yung uh, copy of the presentation. And later on, uh, we will be also sending these copies to you together with your certificate once generated. So for your reference. Okay, so um, with that po, uh, Sir Leo, pwede pong pa-transfer ng host access so that we can share a presentation. Wait lang, sir. Okay. <laughs> sir, <'cause> I... <laughs> sir, it... ito, ito, ito. Uh, sir, it gets at this. Yeah. And sir, you may double D. Ayan. Sige, sir. Ayan. As ayan na yung hosting alit. <laughs> okay. So this time, uh, we will be presenting this certificate of appreciation to our resource speaker and the last resource speaker po. So this certificate of appreciation is hereby presented to Mr. Leo Di Paglikawan of the DICT Calabar Zone for his invaluable insights shared as a resource person during the uh, IBPLS webinar with the theme automation of business application process of the DICT Calabar Zone and Mimaropa held today, June 26, 2023 via Zoom platform to be signed by our regional director. So um, may we request everyone to open their cameras para po magkaroon tayo ng photo opportunity with our third speaker. Ayan. So at the count of three, one, two, three, smile po tayo. Ayan. For the second page po, one, two, three, smile. Okay, thank you very much again, Sir Leo, for sharing po the uh, IBPLS features and discussing different terms no, in relation to our system. So now uh, let us proceed on the next phase of the event in which our LGUs who have performed well on the previous years will be sharing their best practices. But before we proceed, uh, let me remind again everyone to please fill up their attendance. So this will be our basis for, no, of your certificate. So kindly please fill it up correctly so that uh, it will be reflected to your certificate correctly. So for uh, this phase, po, uh, we will be having a sharing of best practices. So we have two for Mimaropa and also three in Calabarzon. But 
first uh, we will be calling for no yung ating LGUs from Mimaropa since they are only two. So allow me to call first to share their best practices on the ground and for us to also no impart this to our non-users. So these are uh, LGUs po no for the information of our other participants are the LGUs who have fully adopted the IBPLS and currently they are using it to their business operations. So with this, uh, may I call first LGU El Nido Palawan to share their best practices. Mr. Dennis R. Sabroso, can you open your camera and mic for us to see you po, no? and for us to hear your best practice on the ground? Hello po, good afternoon. Uh, yes sir, good afternoon. So, narinig din po ako sir. Yes po, you are loud and clear sir. Okay, uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa DICT na ma-invite kami to uh, share yung aming best practices and experiences while using the IBPLS. So, in behalf of our mayor po, Mayor Edna Gakot Lim, and of course, yung head po namin dito sa licensing office, Sir Bernie Barrow, Ako po yung naatasa na actually mag wala kong wala pa po kaming video presentation ABP na magpe-present pero po ito is naka-impart po sa aming mga records na pagpapakita po ng uh, maganda po yung naidulot sa amin while using the system of uh, IBPLS. So for the information of everybody po, yung mga LGUs natin na uh, nagpa-plan pa lang po na magkaroon uh, ng kanilang uh, IBP lessons system, uh, I encourage po talaga na i-pursue nila yan kasi napakaganda po ng system na bigay ng DICT. Although libre po ito, talaga namang mapapakinabangan po ng uh, buong uh, munisipyo po. So, uh, to make it short po, kami ay nagkaroon ng fully uh, use ng IBPLS noong 2021. So, until now po, yung ginagawa lang namin para ma-fully practice po namin yung automation is yung aming online payment na lang po. So, nandun na rin po yung intent namin with the DBP na magkaroon po kami ng online payment po sa aming system. So, noong 2021 po, i-share ko lang po yung mga data na meron kami na na gathered namin from our system na yung naitulong sa amin ng DICT, yung IBPLS. Uh, ito po, i-summarize ko lang po yung mga records namin para sa mga ibang LGUs na uh, gustong makaalam nito. So, noong 2021, kami po ay merong uh, registered na 999 registered business permits issued po yan. So, meron kaming uh, 139 na new applicants doon po sa aming uh, system and 860 po yung aming renewal. So, nakapag-collect po kami ng aming uh, business collections, yung aming taxes, business taxes po and other regulatory fees ng almost... Uh, 30,894,604. Yun po yung na-collect namin using the IBPLS system. So, umangat po kami almost uh, 70% ng aming collections that time. So, ang employees uh, registered namin that time ay 1,693 uh, 1, yung aming uh, uh, employees na nabibigyan ng working permit sa aming munisipyo. And comparison po natin, nung 2022, although nagkaroon tayo ng pandemic, uh, kami po ang unang apiktado doon kahit nga kami ay tourism industry, yung aming mga kinikater dito ay sa mga turista. Nakapag-register lang po kami ng, one, umangat din po kami, pero nakapag-register kami ng 1,242 business uh, establishments and uh, nagninegosyo. So with that time, kasi ang basis natin ng ating collections ay nag start tayo dun sa previous years. Yung. So, nagkaroon po ng pandemic noong 2021, kaya affected yung collections namin ng 2022, pero uh, nasa 26 million pa rin po, 983,000 yung aming collect, na-collecta po sa business. Pero ngayong 2023 po, lumobo kami 
kasi nga uh, nakabangon na tayo sa pandemya unti-unti na po dumadami yung mga registered businesses namin noong 2023 po meron na kami ng um, 478 new applicants and from 943 na renewals naging 1225 na po kami for a total of 1703 business establishments na na-register natin po until ngayon lang po June uh, June 26 ito po yung records namin sa uh, from the system ang nakolekta naman po naming amount with our uh, business uh, tax and regulatory fees we have 41 million Uh, 81,275 as of June 26 po yan. So, nasa second quarter pa lang po tayo ng ating uh, taong 2023. Uh, so, ang target po namin dyan is more or less mga 60 to 70 million po yung makakolekta natin within this year. And, isa po sa pinagmamalaki namin kasi ngayon kami ay talagang na-integrate na po yung ating working permit sa ating uh, system sa IBPLS Uh, na, na encourage po namin yung mga negosyante dahil uh, very smooth lang po yung ating pagpapaprocess ng mga papel napakadali na pagkompleto yung dokumento nila in a uh, few minutes po makukuha na nila kanilang marriage permit so nakapag-register po kami ng mga working permit ng 3,941 uh, na mga workers na na-register natin so More or less po ang collections namin dyan uh, ay nasa 4 na milyon. Labas po yan doon sa 41 milyon na nakolekta natin sa business tax. So, yun po yung naitulong ng DICT na ma-increase kami ang aming collections, ang aming uh, napadali yung aming process. At the same time, uh, uh, ngayon po kasi nagkakakuan lang namin sa nakakuan kami ng DILG assessment po namin with regards doon sa seal of good housekeeping. So, yung records po na hinihingi ng DILG yung mga, kasi isa po yan pag January humihingi sila ng records na kung sino yung may number of days na may volume ng transactions. So, madali po natin matrack yan doon sa mga reports na nakapaloob sa IBPLS. So, nakita po namin na ito yung mga proof na print po natin agad yung mga proof ng application nila to uh, from application to business permits then of course nakita po natin yung mga logs yung pinaka importante po din yung logs para po uh, maiwasan natin na kung saan opisina tumatagal saan ito na no? so na action na agad po yung mga papel na nakakon sa opisina hindi po ito natetenga So, yung mga logs po na yun, yung nang nagbigay sa amin ng uh, malaking puntos doon sa aming uh, ginawang assessment. So, napakita namin doon kung gano sa isang araw, ilang minuto lang natin na-release ang business permit ng isang kliyente. So, in a, minsan may mga walang, tatl uh, walang tatlong oras, mga 2 hours and 32 minutes na-release na po natin ng kanilang business permits. And... Uh, sa ngayon po, kami ay ongoing na rin yung pakikipag-usap namin sa mga barangay officials with uh, integration po ng kanilang barangay clearance kasi nasa system na po yan. Kaso lang nga, uh, magkakaroon po ng elections. So, may mga barangay officials na rin po, captains na, <coughs> sorry po, na nag-intent ng kanilang uh, willingness na mag-integrate uh, ng kanilang barangay clearance at uh, maproseso po ng maayos at mabilis. So, Hopefully by next year po, January, ma fully, mm, fully automated na po kami. Mapursu na namin yung aming online payment at the same time yung aming uh, barangay clearance integration. At nagbabalak na rin po kami ng mga courier services dito na kung hindi ma-pick up ng mga nego negosyante yung kanilang permit through online, kami na po magdi-deliver dun sa kanilang mga negosyo. So, I encourage po sa lahat lahat ng mga LGUs na mag kuan po kayo mag uh, accept po kayo ng po ng DICT. So, malaking tulong po ito. So kami po ay marami ng kahit pa paano mga awards na kami nakukuha through our mga from DICT dahil nga uh, kahit pa paano nagagawa namin ng maayos yung system, napapa-implement ng maayos. So nagpapasalamat po kami 
uh, in behalf po ng aming municipal mayor, Mayor Indagakot Lim, sa DICT, na nabiyayaan po kami ng system na to. Uh, yun lang po. Maraming maraming salamat, sir. Okay. Thank you, Sir Dennis R. Sabroso no, for the very um, informative sharing that you have given to our participants. So it is indeed emphasized po no, na yung pag-increase ng kanilang revenue, pag-consolidate ng mga data is being provided already no, by the system. Hindi na sila nahihirapan mag-consolidate. So that is one of the advantage no, when you adopt the IB. Again, thank you very much, Professor Dennis, for the uh, very informative sharing for our participants. Maraming salamat, Sir Ed. Thank you po. And then next po, uh, let us call. Uh, this uh, LGU po no, have won the top performing LGU for the first class municipalities. And um, may I call LGU San Jose Occidental Mindoro, Miss Filipinas and Castillo. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon po sa lahat. Uh, ngayon po, it's our opportunity to present our best practices. So, nagpapasalamat po kami sa opportunity na to. So, before you present the uh, audio video presentation, I will just give a very short uh, introduction. Uh, the DICT provided us the cloud-based uh, integrated business permits and licensing system last uh, November of 2020. Noon po ni launch yung, yung, ano, yung system na yun and we started using it uh, from January 2021. So very timely uh, dahil po nang, uh, dumating po yung pandemic. So uh, with this, let me share to you the screen is share screen para po maano ma po natin yung uh, aming audio video presentation. Ano? Ayun po ma'am, uh, given po the host access, you can share na po. Ang Municipal Treasurer's Office ng Local Government Unit of San Jose na siyang tagapag-ingat ng pondo ng bayan ay patuloy na nagsusumikap na makapaglingkod sa mga mamamayan sa pamamagitan ng pagpapatupad ng mga best practices. Ang business permits and licensing section nito ay nagsasagawa ng masusing preparasyon upang maging handa sa pagpasok ng annual business registration and renewal. Ang joint inspection team na binubuo ng endorsing offices at iba pang national agencies tulad ng DOLE, SSS, PhilHealth at Pag-ibig ay nagsasagawa ng ocular inspection sa mga business establishment tuwing last quarter of the year. Nagsasagawa din sila ng pagpupulong sa mga bookkeeping offices dahil sila ay katuwang ng LGU San Jose sa business registration and renewal. At upang mas malawak ang information dissemination para sa mga sanusenyos, madalas silang nakakapanayam sa radyo sa pamamagitan ng Municipal Information Office. Dahil sa makabagong panahon at tutok ang lahat sa social media, ipinapatupad ang Cloud-Based Integrated Business Permits and Licensing System o IBPLS sa pagkuha ng business permits mula sa Department of Information and Communications Technology o DIC. May nakatalagang mga endorsing offices na siyang mag a ng mga dokumento upang makompleto ang business permits and licenses. Ito ay binubuo na Municipal Treasurer's Office, Municipal Assessor's Office, Sanitation Division ng Municipal Health Office, Municipal Engineering Office, Municipal Planning and Development Office, at Municipal Environment and Natural Resources Office at Bureau of Fire Protection. Paano nga ba kumuha ng business permits? Una, pagpasa ng application form para sa presentation at uploading ng requirements. Dalawa ang paraan nito, pwedeng online application at walk-in or BPLO-assisted clients. Ikalawa, 
Ito naman ay susuriin ng BPLO at i-endorse ang iba't ibang departamento na susundan ang pagbabayad ng kaukulang taxes, fees, and charges. Alam niyo bang personal pang tinatawagan ng mga kliyente once na i-release na ang tax order of payment? Madalas ding nagpa-follow up ang BPLO sa mga endorsing offices para sa mabilis na endorsement ng mga application. Ipinapaabot din sa DICT ang mga immediate concerns na kailangan ng kanilang aksyon at tugon. Pagkatapos ito, agad nang ipoproseso ang pagre-release ng mayor's permit. Sa pagsisimula pa lamang ng buwan ng Marso, nagsasagawa na ang BPLO ng tax mapping activities upang mamonitor ang mga establishmentong hindi parehestrado at kailangan pang mag-renew. At upang higit na mahikayat at mabigyan ng papuri at pasasalamat ang mga taxpayers, ang Treasurer's Office ay nagbibigay ng parangal na tinawag na Toast to Outstanding and Sterling Taxpayers o Toast at ang pagsasagawa ng Raffle Draw. Bago ang COVID-19 pandemic, binigay ang mga parangal tulad ng Top 20 Early Birds, Top 5 Highest Taxpayers for Individual Category, Top 5 Highest Taxpayers Group or Corporation Category, Most Prompt Individual Taxpayer for 3 Consecutive Years, Most Prompt Corporate Taxpayer for 3 Consecutive Years, at Certificate of Appreciation for the National Agencies na naging kabahagi ng Business One Stop Shop o BOSS. Simula 2021 hanggang 2023, nagsagawa rin ng raffle draw for taxpayers at ang mga maswerteng nanalo ay naggamit ng malalaking premyo. Ang lahat ng mga gawaing ito ay opisyal na naidokumento sa pamamagitan ng programa sa radyo ng LGU San Jose, pagpupost sa MIO Facebook page at Municipal Treasurer's Office. Dahil sa kasipagan at dedikasyon ni na Mr. Ricarte E. Aguilar bilang municipal treasurer at Ms. Filipinas N. Castillo, Business Permit and Licensing Section Head, katuwang ang kanila mga empleyado, makikita ang malaking pagtaas ng registered business establishments simula 2021 hanggang May 2023. Makikita rin ang malaking pagtaas sa kanilang koleksyon kahit pa sa gitna ng kasagsaga ng pandemya ng 2021 hanggang sa kasalukuyan. Dahil dito, nakatanggap ang Treasurer's Office ng Parangal mula sa DICT bilang most number of permits process noong November 2021 at top performing LGU with the most number of transactions in IBPLS noong December 2022. Malaki ang suporta ni Mayor Ray Cahayon Ladaga sa mga programa ng Treasurer's Office ng LGU San Jose. Naniniwala siya na malaki ang magiging ambag nito upang higit na maisakatuparan ang mga programa at proyekto sa bayan ng San Jose. Patuloy din ang panawagan ni Mayor Ladaga na ipagpatuloy ang pagbabayad ng tamang buwis upang sama-sama nating makamit ang isang bayang angat sa pamahalaang tapat. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay tayong lahat. Okay, thank you na. Saan ka pa? Okay po. So, yan po yung short. Uh, thank you na. Um, AB presentation, uh, meron lang pong konting idadagdag kami. So, balip po nung uh, nagkaroon na po kami at gumamit na kami itong DICT uh, Business Permits and Licensing System, na-introduce na rin po namin yung online payment. So, may option po yung ating mga mga clients, they can pay online through GCAS or the LinkBiz portal. So, yun po yung isa sa um, na-introduce namin, so nas lalo pong napabilis yung ating uh, pangungolekta. And kung nakita niyo po kanina yung, yung increase po sa collection namin and also increase in the number of registered business establishments, ito po ay uh, dahil po unang-una sa pag-introduce po natin ng system na ang mga tao po kahit na po nasa kanilang bahay ay kaya nilang mag uh, mag-apply ng kanilang business permits registration para sa bagong uh, mga negosyo or renewal para naman po dun sa uh, magpapanibago ng kanilang licenses. 
So, yun po. Uh, ang nakikita lang po namin na medyo naging problema ay yung connectivity. Lalo na po na nakaranas po ang bayan ng San Jose ng matinding uh, brownout or power interruptions uh, nung mga nakaraang mga buwan. Subalit, hindi rin po ito naging hadlang na nagkaroon po, pa rin po kami ng mataas na collection sa sa local uh, sources natin, yung business tax, fees, and charges. Kaya po, uh, nagpapasalamat kami uh, in behalf po ng, ng ating um, mahal na mayor, uh, Mayor Ray C. Ladaga, ang ating vice mayor, si um, Mayor Sunny Javier at ang sangguniang bayan members, ang lahat ng department heads, especially the endorsing offices, And of course po ang aming municipal treasurer's office at ang aming assistant treasurer, municipal treasurer Ricardo Aguilar, assistant treasurer Maria Lourdes Abileda, ang lahat po ng mga section heads na kasama namin at ang buong pwersa po ng MTO family. Kami po ay nagpapasalamat sa malaking oportunidad na ibinigay po sa local government unit of San Jose upang mas mapaganda pa po ang aming uh, Uh, pagpapatakbo ng business permits and licensing system. Muli po mag, uh, maraming maraming salamat po at magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Ako po si Pilipinas Castillo, ang local treasury operations officer tree and at the same time head of the business permits and licensing section. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Thank you very much po Ma'am Pilipinas Castillo for the very uh, creative AVP that you have presented to us and it shows all of the best practices no ng LGU that is very a uh, uh, good way po no to share to the other LGUs yung uh, mga usual na ginagawa ng ating uh, LGU para at least ma-recognize sila as one of the top, top performing LGUs sa ating region again uh, let us all give a round of applause a virtual round of applause to LGU San Jose So, uh, so use... <laughs> Thank you, Ma'am Pilipinas. Ayan po, so requesting po again, Ma'am, to return yung hosting para po uh, ma-present ko po yung ating presentation. Thank you very much po. Okay, so at this young tour, uh, while we are waiting po, no, uh, uh, the next po, that will share their um, best practices will be from other regions. So now we are now uh, done in the Mimaropa region. So let's move on to the Calabar Zone region. So on our list, we have two. First is um, the LGU Naik Cavite and next is um, let me recheck again. LGU Naik and also LGU Lopez Quezon po. So may we call first to share uh, the um, best practices. Uh, and also may I also uh, first request again mong Pilipinas to return po yung hosting um, access natin. Pakilagay na lang po sa Ed Gonzalez po para ma-share po natin yung presentation. Wait lang po, sir. Okay. Andrea na po. So for LGU na ikpo, no, we have Miss Criza Paula si Nazareno. So she will be sharing po the best processes of LGU na ik. So for the meantime, ma'am, no, as we wait for the hosting to be transferred po sa ating... Paano mag-transferred? <laughs> Ay, yun po. Bali, ma'am, uh, on my name, uh, yung may tatlong dot po, no, you can select po yung may post. Yes, po, yung sa gilid, ma'am. Sa may gilid, sir? Yes, po. Yung uh, tatlong dot po, sir. 
under my name, then i-click nyo po yung, ayun po sir, pwede pala mag-reclaim ng host. <laughs> ayun sir, okay na po. Thank you very much. Again, thank you very much po mga Pilipinas and LGU San Jose for sharing a uh, very well presentation through AB. So now po, let's move on in Calabarzon region. So again, let me call on from LGU Naik, Miss Crisa Paula C. Nazareno. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. Nananinig po ako. Yes, ma'am. You are loud okay. and clear po. Okay. So, good afternoon po to everyone, to the IBPLS team, uh, Region 4A and B, to our guest speakers from ARTA and DILG, and to all participants. So, gusto ko po magpasalamat dahil uh, binigyan niyo po kami ng opportunity para makapag-share ng aming best practices and experience din po sa, uh, using system IBP, IBPLS system. So we have been using the system po for two years na since January 2021. And um, transitioning from manual to automated is a challenge for us. Lalo na po uh, kulang pa po kami sa mga computer hardware, uh, sa internet connection, and wala pa po kaming IT that time. Uh, when we started using the system, lahat po ng proseso namin na iayos na na streamline na po kasi nag-base po kami doon sa process ni system. So nakakapanibago po kasi hindi yun yung nakasanayan na namin. But of course po, uh, change is inevitable. Automation is a must na po talaga. Lalo na ngayon, our world is changing and uh, lahat na po isang tap na lang sa phone. So we must adapt to provide it, uh, we must adapt to provide efficient service and satisfaction to our clients. So bilang users naman po ng system, mas napadali po ang aming work. Mas madali po mag-generate ng report, lalo na po yung mga hinihingi ng mga national agencies at iba't ibang opisina sa LGU, mag-check po ng mga discrepancies sa assessment, mag-check po ng mga files dahil pwede na po nating i-check sa system yung mga in-upload natin or in-upload ni clients through online application. Hindi na po natin kailangang mag-kalkal uh, sa ating mga cabinet madali-dali po mag-track ng mga accounts. At syempre po, nabawasan po yung errors, lalo na po pag manual, prone po kasi sa errors talaga. So, nachi-check po niya ni system. Um, during one-stop shop po, nag average po kami ng almost 100 or 100 plus po na accounts per day. So, share ko na lang din po yung accomplishment ng aming office. Noong 2022 po, nagkaroon po kami ng total business registration na 2,967. Um, and then, ngayon po, as of June 20, meron na po kami uh, 3,006 wait lang po. Meron na po kami 3,661 applications. So, hang, uh, as of June 20 pa lang po yun. Nagkaroon po ng 23% increase po. And then sa uh, BPLO collection naman po, ng business taxes at uh, uh, other fees and charges, noong 2022 po, meron po kami 70 million plus na collection, total collection. Ngayon pong uh, as of June 19, 2023, meron po kami 75 million na, na uh, total collection. So mga almost 7% seven, seven po ang tinaas niya. May mga collectibles pa po kami hanggang December 2023. So talagang nakatulong po sa amin yung system. Um, nagkaroon din po kami ng info dissemination through our Facebook page para po sa mag-assist ng mga online applications. So bukod po sa satisfied ng clients namin, kami rin po sa LGU, yung mga end users po ng system ay satisfied. So hindi po yung magiging posible kung hindi po dahil sa support ng aming mayor at ng vice mayor. At syempre po sa support din po ng mga barangay officials sa pag-integrate po ng barangay clearance sa system at sa mga endorsing offices po na gumagamit ng system. So gusto ko na rin po magpasalamat sa DICT Region 4A team, kay Sir Ken, kay Sir Leo, dahil po since day one, nung training pa lang po namin, talagang tinutukan po nila kami. 
At saka tuwing meron po kami na encounter na issues sa system, may mga erroneous ano kami, uh, inputs talaga pong ina-assist nila kami. And syempre po sa buong DICT po for developing this system for the convenience of its stakeholders. Dahil po malaki po ang naitulong nyo sa aming LGUs para makapagbigay ng mabilis at maayos na proseso sa aming mga kababayan. Yun lang po. Maraming salamat po. Okay. Thank you, Ma'am Criza Paula. Nazareno from LG Naik for sharing your uh, best practices on the ground and experiences in using the ID. So thank you again, ma'am. So now, po, let us proceed on the LGU Lopez. I think we have Miss Cindy Montalbo and our last sharer po, no, for this event. Ma'am Cindy. Good afternoon, po. Uh, in behalf of LGU Lopez, Yes, magpapakilala po muna ako. Ako po si Cindy Montalbo, ang bagong nakatalagang head of DPLO po ng LGU Lopez. Nag-retire po si Ma'am Elsie noong June 16. Um, as per best practices po, so sa ngayon, ilang days ko pa lang po nagagamit yung system and so far, malaki yung naiitulong nito po para sa ating Uh, mga kababayan na nag aabid ng business permits dahil nga po mas napapabilis yung proseso at hindi na tayo uh, kumbaga iwan na tayo sa mga manual na nagpapatagal po ng proseso ano po so dito um, yun ay tulong po niya sa amin nung 2022 may... meron po kaming na-issue na business permits na one thousand Uh, at nag-generate po ito ng revenue na 22 and 32. Um, uh, kailangan ipadagdag po doon sa aming system. At um, ginagawa po namin ng lahat para mas uh, uh, mapabuti pa po yung service yung ibinibigay po sa ating mga kababayan. At malaking uh, tulong din po na meron po tayong mga IT personnel sa ating LG, yun na kung saan yung mga mga minor na issues or mga kailangan ayusin, meron po kaming assistance na nakukuha. So, uh, gusto ko lang i-share sa inyo na mas maganda po kung meron po tayong IT personnel sa loob po ng ating LG, malaking tulong po siya. Uh, yun lang naman po yung may i-share ko dahil lang din po sa bago pa lang din po ako at looking forward po ako na marami pa po akong matutunan habang sinasagawa po natin yung mga ganitong klase ng webinar. Yun lamang po at magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Okay. Thank you very much, Ma'am Cindy, the head of the BPLO from LGU Lopez, for sharing your best practices on the ground. So it is indeed uh, good to know no, na even though bago pa lang si Ma'am Cindy, ay nakikita na niya yung significance ng pagkakaroon ng sistema or system in automating the business application process. So again, thank you very much, Ma'am Cindy. So with that po at this juncture, our sharing of best practices is now over. So again, may we again remind our participants to fill up their attendance. Ayan. So you can scan or you can click the link on the uh, chat box. Po. So at this juncture, uh, our event will now be coming to an end. So may I call on our Technical Operations Division Chief of Mimaropa Region for a closing remarks and this is to be followed by the TOD of 4A. So, Engineer Norley A. Dabo for closing remarks. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Loud and clear po kayo, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon po. Your Regional Director po, Director Shara C. Otega. The DILG Calabarzon and Mimarapa Personnel. To our resource first speakers, To my DICT colleagues, local chief executives, BPLOs, and MTMOs who are with us today, and also to the BPLOs who shared their best practices. Good afternoon. Digitalization is a process of one of the major steps to make an e-governance. The DICT is in a full force making LGUs to be technologically advance in terms of government and related processes. It is indeed an informative and discussion knowing that the IBPLS made by the DICT can be a key for the digitized process of 
business application. And also the, the DILG and ARTA discuss emphasize, discussion emphasize that automation of the process can lead into progress of the LGU. In behalf of the DICT Mimaropa, we would like to send our deepest gratitude in attending this event. We hope by attending our by attending our participants learn and would be able to appreciate more the system offered by DICT with, with partnership with DILG and other participating agencies. Again, thank you very much and stay safe always. Okay, thank you very much, Ma'am Norli, for those remarks. Okay, so now let's move on on the uh, closing remarks of the Technical Operations Division Chief of the DICT Calabarzon Region, Dr. Maria Graciela Bukad via video recorded. May I call Sir Leo to present for the message? And po, um, Sir Leo, can we present po the uh, speech of the POD for Calabarzon Region? Yeah, thank you very much po. To our distinguished guests, partners, officials of different LGUs and agencies, resource persons from DILG, ARTA and their executives, our regional director, Director Chelsea Ortega, the IB Peles team, the ICT colleagues, other guests, good afternoon. Let me extend our sincerest gratitude and appreciation to all who took time to be with us today for your effort and participation and engagement throughout this session. Through the talks of the ICT, the ILG, and ARTA, together we have learned and explored more about the transformative power of a streamlined and efficient system that holds remarkable potential for businesses and local governments alike, such as this integrated business permit and licensing system. We are also very grateful to the LGUs and their respective representatives in sharing their best practices, valuable contributions, and tireless pursuit of excellence in utilizing the system. We applaud your commitment and dedication in embracing the IBPLS and striving for excellence in its implementation. Your collective wisdom and experiences have laid the foundation for success and progress. So the practices discussed today undoubtedly pave way for a more efficient, accountable, and business-friendly environment. As we move forward, I urge each of you to champion the lectures and best practices we have discussed. Embrace transparency, accountability, and efficiency in all aspects of the IBPLS implementation and in utilizing other automated systems. Let us all become the beacons of inspiration and change, demonstrating the transformative power of IBPLS to others. Thank you everyone. We know that you are one with us in achieving the mission to help individuals and businesses adapt to digital transformation, ensure business continuity, and continue to deliver excellent public service at all times. Let us all work together towards building a digital nation. Good afternoon. Okay, thank you very much, guests, partners, for the um, closing remarks. So with that, po, uh, allow me to share again our um, thing. Po. So requesting Sir Leo to share. Ayan po. Salamat, Sir. So with that po again, on behalf of the DICT Calabarzon and Mimaropa region, we would like to thank everyone who have attended today. And uh, we hope that by attending this event, our non-user LGUs will be having their interest in adopting the DICT's IBPLS for free. So we have sent to you all of our emails for us to uh, reach you or you can reach us via email if you have more queries and questions in regards to the adoption of the IB. So if we don't have any more questions and queries, again, we would like to thank our 
sharers, resource speakers from ARTA and DILG, and also all of the LGUs who have attended today. So let us call it a day and have a great week ahead. So our event is now adjourned. You may now leave the room. Thank you very much, Paul.